Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast, Black Friday edition. Today on the show, we're continuing our annual tradition of having Doug DeMuro in the studio. You guys know Doug. He doesn't need the intro that everyone else gets. It's Doug. Cars and bids, Doug. Works and features, Doug. You get it. On this episode, we're talking about Countach's, of course, since we now both own them. We're talking about trends in the market, cars and bids, how that's going, the stress of entrepreneurship, and all of that good stuff. But today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. You guys know Off the Record, too, because I talk about it like every single episode. They help you fight tickets. They don't just help you. They fight them for you. If you get pulled over, you need off the record. Don't plead guilty. That's for suckers. Off the record, it's so easy. All you do is go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the off the record app. And then so you, you make an account and you uh, get a snap a photo of your ticket or scan it, upload it, tell them what happened, answer a couple basic questions, and then they pair you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket, and they fight it for you. You don't have to do anything else. And if you don't get the points off your record, you don't even have to pay. It's that straightforward. Offtherecord.com slash TST, code TST10 on the Off the Record app. I use it. So many Smoke and Tire listeners uh, use it. I get emails about it all the time, thanking me for introducing them to a service that uh, that makes their life so much easier, particularly if you get a ticket somewhere where you don't live. I mean, I understand if you don't want to use off the record because you could fight that ticket yourself, you know, if you've got the time, if that's like sport for you. But if you're a busy person or you get that ticket somewhere far away, you need off the record because you don't want to go back there to deal with that. You feel me? Offtherecord.com slash TST, code TST10 on the Off the Record app. Now, let's get into some Smoke and Tire podcast with our guest, Doug DeMuro. There's a lot of really good cars in this area, actually, just by chance. None of them are shown here. <laughs> yeah, none of them are. <laughs> well, I'm sending, I, I've sent you two. Yeah. And I'm sending you one more. I'm sending you a 458 Spider. Oh really? Yeah, and the mini, it's downstairs. Right? Well, the the mini is physically being sent to you to right, drive, right? And it's really, really. I would nice. review that four five eight spider. Really? It, yeah. Are you willing to set it down? Yeah. I the only four five eight I've ever reviewed is a Speciale Aperta, and it was years ago. Oh, this is a twenty twelve four five eight spider in TDF blue. With it's nice. It's a nice car. Good service history. Tighten that. Tighten that nut a little bit. Yeah. Make sure it stays. Are we live? Yes. We are. Probably. Oh um, so people I'll are ask us? the I'll ask the owner wanted it um, wanted it up quickly. That's why he went. If with you yours, wanted to so go quick, then then just probably set it not. Up. Yeah. But um, yeah, because I'm a little delayed right now with the mini. Stuff, the sure. minis are uh, are an estate sale. So are they are they titled non op? No, they're clean titled, but the 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 registration expired along with the owner, <laughs> um, and so the owner's sister is liquidating the estate. But they're no reserve. And they're both. This guy was uh, obsessed with minis, and the black one he bought new, and he got into like an accident in the first year he had it, and it looks like he spent all the money in the world making it perfect again. Like the math wasn't Is that the there. Co- the one that you're sending us, the Co- no, that's no. the Cooper, the black one, and I'm sending you the JCW. Um, which, which is, is a JCW coupe, stick. a JCW coupe, stick. the dream mini. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Also, no reserve, stock, fifty-two thousand miles. So it's a really nice car. Yeah. I haven't done a review on. I so rarely review minis. I'm like the only person left who like loves minis too. I Everybody like else them, has turned against minis. I like them like pre 2015. Yeah, yeah. Especially like a J, an 06 JCW is the game over fucking right. mini. There, where it goes, Neat! it's got the real <laughs> blower wine. That's the shit. I got it. Okay, then this is that that I'm going to be feeling. Well, the one I'm sending you is a 2013, oh, right, which right. is a turbo, not a super right, right, but, right. It's, but it is a coupe. And backwards it's, hat. Yeah, backwards baseball hat, and it is a great color, and it's got really good options and yada, yada, yada. It's right. nice. Doug is here. He's laid out uh, the candy. It's Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, these are, um, can I try a gentrified Reese's Gentrified. <laughs> Yes, the Whole Foods. I've never, uh, I've never seen one. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try one. It's I, a I white have to chocolate. Say, I had one. It's not as good as I was hoping. I think these are Halloween leftovers. I got it from the Chevron. Peanut butter is a little dry. Peanut butter is a little dry. <laughs> a little dry. Generally speaking, white Reese's are the best candy. Uh, 
Today they are not. Do not That's judge right. I mean, white Reese's. I wouldn't say it's worse than a, uh, if it was a dark chocolate one or a regular chocolate one. Milk chocolate. Dark chocolate Reese's. Milk chocolate. Oh, there's an idea. They have one. That. I think there's a dark chocolate. Yeah. There's everything Reese's. Reese's has become the thing. My All favorite wants Reese's is, is like butter. massively gluttonous is the big cup. Yes. The double size. Yeah. That is like massively yeah. gluttonous. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it is extremely gluttonous. Haven't had one in years, but damn, was that my move. Whenever I film in L.A., I feel that it's I'm okay to treat myself to some sort of uh, the drive home. What are, that, well, I'm wondering, <laughs> well, yeah, what are your excuses conditions for having like a double king well, if size? If I'm coming on here, listen, I woke up early. I filmed this morning. I am. I needed some food. And sure. when I need some food, you get white Reese's. What did you what? think? It's good. I think I it's like good. I do think it's good. That's the thing. Peanut I, butter solves all have problems. Have you ever oh, yeah. bought the Reese's peanut butter like in the jar to use for a sandwich? That's a thing you can do. Yeah, and it's also massively gluttonous, but it's fucking delicious. Not at a store, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is really? It, it's yeah, their, like a grocery it's store. their blend of peanut butter? It's the peanut butter that goes in the cups, and you buy it in a jar to make a sandwich with. And it's mm-hmm. fucking Is it different good. than regular peanut butter? It's got probably, probably triple sugar the sugar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what bad. I like, actually, now that I think about it, now that I'm eating this? For Halloween, they make white Reese's, but they're shaped like ghosts. Uh huh. That's what I like. That's oh, fun. Okay. This isn't enough. So the shape changes. The it vibe. does because the the shape is enough that you, it's like four bites. Uh-huh. And so because this, if I oh, ate this it, is bigger. Yeah. I would then have to unpackage the next one, and by that time, <laughs> <laughs> by that time I've realized the first one was only okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have like six of them. That's really funny. But That's how I feel about uh, Prowlers. I'd like to have six of them, one for each day of the week. You're the only one. Remember well, the we, trailer? Huh? Remember the Prowler trailer? Fuck yeah, dude. It was fire. <laughs> that shit was dope. <laughs> Have you ever seen a Prowler trailer towed by something that wasn't a Prowler? No, that oh. is very now, interesting. That would be the ultimate spot. That is very interesting. It I never even occurred to me. The, uh, d- the ultimate Doug spot. Tag Doug on Twitter if you've seen a Prowler trailer being towed by something that's not a prowler. I have a, you know, you what know, if it was a proprietary hitch that you it like, probably you was could only because how is the prowler the gonna... lightning port of trailer <laughs> hitches? You can only tow it with a prowler. My my cooler that I take to the beach is uh-huh. the Pontiac Aztec cooler. <laughs> Yeah. And nobody's did you, like, did you nobody buy at the that beach on eBay? Has like recognized. Yeah, probably out of an Aztec that crashed and killed the occupants, but I have the cooler. <laughs> so I'm all good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a nice one. Did it do anything special besides say Aztec on it? Yes. What it does it do? something very special. The it locks the handle locks in place on uh-huh. the Pontiac logo. So like the Pontiac logo is let's just like the is so the like lock. frames. Oh, that's cool. All Boom. Right. There you go. The uh <clears throat> yeah, what is the best? Bit of like weird car accessory. I mean, there's the the first gen Cayenne spare tire. Honda CRV. Yes, that is a good one. That's a fucking Honda weird one. Honda CRV picnic table is kind of an all timer. I don't know if I've ever seen Whoa. that one. Seriously? No. Can you? The can first we find... two generations of Honda CRV came, came pic- standard with a picnic table. Really? Yeah. Just type in Honda we'll, CRV. Hey, we'll, Look we'll, at my we'll... Aztec cooler. <laughs> your, your Aztec cooler is fucking rad. That's very dope. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Pull up that Honda. Do you CR-V? remember the Jeep boombox? Yeah, there the, was like a bazooka tube. And you know that what's funny? Jeep on it. That is now a thing. The Tacoma, which I shot this morning, yeah. has now a detachable. Uh, and Rivian, the Rivian Rivian's does. Got, yeah, more and more. It's like become a thing. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because we're outdoor people. We got to have an outdoor life. Oh, yeah, okay. It's like a card table. That makes sense. They all. This, this gen CRV, there were tens of thousands of them. They're all driving around picnic tables. Oh, in the back. No a, one knows about that. <laughs> <It's a good laughs> I just think it's a spare tire cover, right? If you, It's the perfect car for like a three-card Monty hustler. <laughs> You're ready to go. <laughs> like, stash your fucking picnic table in that there. That's exactly right. Oh, that's pretty rad. That one's okay. on some rims, too. Uh, the... Um, I mean, the PT Cruiser trailer is probably the most legendary. Yeah. Uh, the new Defender's got a bunch of, like, weird stuff that comes with it. That no Almost uniformly heinous. The medical kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, attached to the <laughs> right. windows. But it yeah. has a lot of that stuff. Yeah, yes. yeah. Ooh, there must have been. In the 80s, there must have been some. Oh, I'm sure there was. You remember the Honda City with the that came with the motorcycle? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. And oh, Honda will probably bring know. that back in some way with their Moto Compacto right. little electric scooter thing. Right. Which I'd like to try. That seems fun. Can we talk about the tradition of me coming on this program? Yeah, it's usually around holiday time. It's a little earlier than normal this year. I have a baby schedule. Dip. This is what happens, okay? I try to come on this program around Christmas because it is my favorite Christmas tradition. I'm glad. And because I think the ad revenue is higher in it is. <laughs> December. And so You're very generous your with your time. To us for <laughs> Christmas. To you. You're, if, we, we, if we sort the, uh, the, the sort by traffic... You're, you're actually the top two positions. Why do you think that is? What do you think people want to know? Because you're very popular on 
within the but realm of car internet. you've had a lot of people on. Like, I would rather hear from Throttle House. <laughs> they're, up, they're in the top <laughs> ten too. as well. They do well. They're, <laughs> in the, they're in the top ten as well. But, okay, so usually I come on Christmas. I have a baby who's coming in another four weeks from today. Congratulations. Thank you. Pre- preemptive. Congratulations. Thank you. We hope it all works out. And so I couldn't come here because I don't live in L.A., even though everybody thinks I do. And so I had to come today. Why do they think that? Everyone thinks that. You've made it pretty clear I beg repeatedly people. that repeatedly. you don't. <laughs> I live in San Diego. Is this camera? What camera do I talk into? Yeah, if pick I want to here, this one is fine. Camera San 5 is Diego. good. San Diego. It is Four hours from here. <laughs> when I leave here, it will be a four-hour ride home. Yeah, in that Benzo. Best car I ever owned. It's a good. It's a good car. Have you considered getting one? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. But now that I'm now that I'm over the public charging network, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? Okay, I want to talk about the public charging network for a second. There is complaints about the public charging network that has been brought to us by uh, Electrify America. <laughs> yeah. You know how Electrify America started? With Dieselgate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a punishment. It was you a federal it, government punishment yeah, yeah, to Volkswagen. You can't expect a company that was started as a punishment to do a good job. I don't understand why if people you, are so surprised. If their mom for, was like, Douglas, <laughs> right, clean your room. People don't realize this, though. They Would just, you do a good job? They just like, add Electrify the America. still dirty. You, this, <laughs> you're exactly right. People just like send notes on Instagram to Electrify America. Clean this up. Do better. Why? They don't care. There's no. There was, this wasn't a goal of theirs. Yeah, no. They weren't even trying to make a business. No. The government said you have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Of it's, course it's going to be not mad. great. It's not great. Yeah. I, to me, it's like this is the least surprising thing that has ever existed. <laughs> Businesses <laughs> founded on the principles of punishment <laughs> right? are not bound to be successful. by a company that didn't want to do this. Yeah. That invested billions in diesel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, of course, it's going to be bad. Yeah. And it is. But you charge at home. I do. I, I do. 95% of the time. And the 5% that I don't is a fucking nightmare. And I uh, was happy to be an adopter. I love driving my electric car. But uh, when my wife calls me and says that she is virtually stranded somewhere because the fucking thing doesn't work the way it's supposed to. You wish she had a Mercedes I don't E450 need that shit terrain. in my life. So there you go. Maybe, maybe time for a little plug-in hybrid. How about... A Mercedes E450 All Terrain. Why don't I just buy your Look at shit? That. I'm never. I'm never selling this car. No, really? no. That's, that's what every know, enthusiast. That's, you should <laughs> never say that. That's a. That's a bad thing. No, to say. I'm going to sell this when the new one. Yeah. When I get a new one, I'm not going to, of course, buy it. New, I was but. actually thinking that rather than buying an Look electric car or a hybrid car, the most environmentally friendly thing that I could do mm -hmm. is buy any car that is already here. That already exists. Not buy a car that was built for me, shipped across an ocean somewhere. Well, in three years, when the new E-Class has been out for two years and I buy a used one, <laughs> yeah. you can buy mine Didn't and it's going to Didn't you buy this one slightly used? I bought, well, it was sold, it was sent new to a dealership in Oklahoma yeah. where they don't have a market for these. So the finance manager drove it for nine months. He hit a small animal, which I assume was actually a large animal that is not on the Carfax, and I will not be disclosing it. Small human. <laughs> yeah, small, he hit a small <laughs> human. By that, I mean he hit a cyclist. By that, I mean he hit. <laughs> right. So look, he hit something he hit, okay, yeah. and now we're fine, and I'm driving it. Yeah. And it's great. I'm first title owner. That, that's what counts. Wow. Probably. That's what, that's that might not even be true, to be I don't care. It's I, great. I do, do, the only person that cares is you and the person you sell it to. Is, so is it numbers matching and stuff? Is it? <laughs> Except <laughs> for that Fender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go looking for the VIN label Just on that Fender. All stock Barrett yeah. Jackson in 20 years. Yeah, no, I, but I think I'm, I'm, we made, I may just have to replace it with a, a car that's already here. A lightly used car and that, and the, the, the not building me a new car will mostly offset whatever. Right. Adopt, don't conceive. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've only ever purchased used cars. Have you never bought a new car? I bought one new car. It was my Land Rover Defender, which I didn't mm. really love. Yeah. And then uh, now I, here we are. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I've, I, I've bought new daily drivers and then used Fun cars. What other new daily drivers? You bought that Mach E. What else you got? I've I've had a bunch of new daily drivers. I bought my my Volt new, my Raptor, the Focus RS, the Fiesta ST, Porsche. Damn. He's oh, I guess I bought either. the Spider. Was the Spider was new? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. And Mini? No, Mini was a trade. Oh, my my Mercury Mountaineer I had in college. No, the Mini I bought new. Oh, Wait, the Mini I'm, I bought new. Just go I did. Right. I did I'm trade. Not, it. I'm gonna actually put a stop. We're I gonna did go back to the Mercury car. Mountaineer. Yeah. What uh, was it? A five zero? 
No, it was a four six. It was the it was the two thousand and one Mercury Mountaineer. Actually, it was a fucking great car. It was really really nice. Yeah, it was. O one was the last year of the second gen. Sorry, it might have been an O two. It was the first year of the, of the waterfall headlight. Of the waterfall one. headlights. Pull, can yeah. you pull up one of these, Zach? I'd like. And to it take was it. the it was a V eight all wheel drive, and I put ninety seven thousand miles on it in three years while I was in college. Damn. Yeah, I put TVs in the truck. Alpine TVs in the headrest because that was what people you couldn't not do it. Then. Well, that was what people who sold beauty. drugs did, <laughs> and that's what I did. I sold drugs and I put <laughs> used the money to put TVs in the truck. And they it was sold nice. Drugs three, out of their Mercury Mountaineer. Three row, no, no, I didn't sell drugs out of the Mountaineer. I was in you college. Could. I sold drugs out of my apartment, Delivery. and then I moved units. I did the duffel shuffle across state lines in, in the, the Mercury Mountaineer. Mountaineer. Yeah, and it had a three row, and then you know when in, when you had those three row SUVs when they first started making midsize SUVs with three rows, you had that little like eight inch space right behind the thing. behind the thing. So I had a custom speaker box made to fill every <laughs> inch of that. Right. And then I had TVs in the visor. I had TVs for the second row and then TVs for the third row also. Were you on Unique Autosport? Were you Dude, on the I show? Was su- I was supportive. Yeah. Did you have rims? Uh, no. Outside the Left truck. Left OE. Nice. That's how it should be. The exterior of the truck was stock. I had tints. He didn't want people to know that he right. had this, was, all these TVs inside. Yes. It was, uh, it was black with, the, with the, the silver on the bottom. In what situation did you end up with a <laughs> you know, Mercury Mountaineer? What, what did you want and then end up with a Mercury Mountaineer? Uh, when I went to college, I had my modified Ford Mustang, SN95 Mustang, heavily modified. And I went to college in Philly. And Philly has the worst roads right. possibly in America. Right. Boston might be worse, New but Orleans. it's but yes. Oh, uh, no, yeah, Philly, New York, Philly, New Orleans and Boston are your three worst. Right, right, right. But unlike New Orleans, Philly has like snow and shit too. Right, right. Um and so I I sold my 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 Mustang was like getting really trashed by Philly. So I wanted to get a an SUV and my good family friend owned a uh, uh, car dealership Got in New it. Jersey, and one of their brands was Mercury. Mercury. So that's that's how I ended up with. The and Mercury he was like, Mercury. "Dude, take it, please." You know what he threw in? <laughs> he this was he threw in. I threw shit in, he you threw not. In your wagon, <laughs> free pinstriping. Oh, so because he had already done it. Because <laughs> I had the pinstriping, and the guy who did the pinstripe like painted a little landscape on, in the back corner. It was like a mountain. Like he painted, it was like a Bob Ross, and he rode out <laughs> mountaineer. It was kind of funny, it's actually, because cool. it was a mountaineer. It was a mountaineer. Yes. Yeah. What do you think happened to that particular mountaineer? Guys, we got to take a quick break from the action for today's sponsor, Electric E-Bikes. This could be the best gift ever this holiday. Electric e-bikes will impress even the hardest person to shop for on your list. There are lots of e-bikes to choose from, but there's only one Electric XP. It's the best selling e-bike in America. It's the perfect gift for the explorer, the eco-warrior, the parent, or as a treat for yourself. And starting at just $799, These e-bikes are friendly on your wallet. Plus, you can get hundreds of dollars in free accessories when you purchase this holiday season at electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com. E-bikes can make a big world much smaller. You can go farther, faster than you can on a traditional bike. You can go up hills that are bigger than you could go up on a traditional bike. You could commute. It could eliminate car trips. It could eliminate grocery trips. It can, everything, all those really short drives from a mile to five miles that, that, that you would do in a car, but maybe not ride a bike for, an e-bike, electric e-bike, will absolutely make those journeys doable. For instance, I love my e-bike, right? And I ride it to work. And I wouldn't ride a regular bike to work. It's only a couple of miles, but like, I don't want to be like sweaty. Like I exercise a lot. Every day I exercise. And I don't need to exercise on my commute. I just want to get there. I want to get through traffic. I want to get there predictably, no stress, right? And I don't want to be like sweaty all day. So an e-bike is the best way to do that, to transport myself, right? I can exercise with a regular bike. I can exercise on my own time. But on my commute, on my errands, I'm trying to get there efficiently, quickly, affordably. You don't have to register or insure an e-bike. You don't have to buy gas. They don't, they call it, they cost you barely nothing in electricity to charge up. They charge up really fast. And these electric e-bikes are 
awesome. You definitely want to check them out. And uh, you go over to electricebikes.com to find the electric model that uh, is best for you. And they're giving away hundreds of dollars in free accessories with any electric e-bike purchase this holiday, including America's best-selling e-bike, the XP 3.0. L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com electric ebikes.com check them out and now back to the doug show well when i got finally traded it back in it had a transmission problem yeah i went that, through that was the, that was the thing that took out those explorers and yeah those. i went through other well, and I, overall i would say it was a good <laughs> yeah. car but it had three transmissions in it the first oh. two were replaced under warranty oh yeah the first two transmission were placed under warranty. You dish that car before the warranty. Ends. Well, I was, a th- yeah. I mean, that was that was kind of it. But I did do ninety seven thousand miles in three years, which is that's a lot of miles. You know it. what? Ford made a transmission that lasted thirty thousand miles. <laughs> yeah, great. I despite that, I liked it. I have fond memories of it. It was very comfortable. It took all my friends wherever we needed to go. And, that was back when you could many be many stuff kilograms. And... I learned, helped me learn the metric system. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> so we just talk about this now. We're certain that all the statutes of limitations have expired. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. All this is a, a, a legend. Plus, you were a low-level guy in Philly. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Compared to, I was a low-level guy in Philly, but a high-level guy in Ohio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Duffels were shuffled, units were moved. It, there's nothing happening anymore. Right. No one gives a fuck. Now. Right. The old but the Mercury sucks. Mountaineer served. It did serve me well. And uh, I actually thought, despite the transmission thing, that it was it was built pretty well. It, it was it was a solidly put Those, together. That was thing. the coolest gen of Explorer. I remember when it came out; it was the coolest thing in the world. It was like, wow, because nice. the first two gens Explorer were pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. The ninety five was like a round. But do you remember when they went to the ninety five and it and it the first time you saw one, you were like, oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid. Okay, ninety five Explorer came out. Teddy Meyer, his mom had got one. Yeah, like. She probably paid over, <laughs> or whatever the equivalent was at ninety five, yeah, and Bauer. I was like so jealous of Teddy Meyer's mom and yeah. her red Explorer. <laughs> everybody, everybody that I went to high school, or middle school, and high school, with, everybody's parents got an Explorer. We ended up having a green ninety six two door. My brother drove it, and I was my the first car I drove really, just like that. And then we had an O one. That Sport. green is kind of like Porsche's Adventurine. It's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Those cars were all. Destroyed by cash for clunkers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> literally yeah. all of yeah, them. Yeah, they're all gone. Yeah, they're all yeah. gone. Yeah. Probably for the best. The uh, a lot of my friends got uh, the two door, the two door small ones, the six the cylinders, sport. the sports, as like f- higher end first cars, and there were a bunch passed down from parents. Right. A lot, a lot of Eddie Bowers. Lots mm-hmm. of Eddie Bowers. Yeah, yeah, with the chromes. Chrome three uh-huh, spokes. Uh-huh. That's how you do it. Yeah, those were the jam. <laughs> It was a crazy experience. Every car was that. In there the were north, no SUVs. In the Northeast, it took the world by storm. You just That's just what you got. There yeah. like, weren't other options. The Blazer was weird and small. Toyota wasn't here. Yeah. They, Nissan was. They had trucks. The Pathfinder and the Forerunner were like trucks. Like, no one wanted when people, that. When people, had the, when people had the Blazers, they're like, oh, you're like, you're like poor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, it kind of was. Yeah. One, guy, one, one girl I went to school with had a bravada, and it was like... You're trying, but <laughs> you're still. <laughs> I feel like that means their, her grandparents bought that car for right. her. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they're yeah. like, you want SUVs? Here's what we got. And like, yeah, Great. you're like, an Oldsmobile. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Somebody reached out to me with a really clean first-gen Bravada the other day that they want to sell. And they're like, I think I'm just going to put it on Craigslist. It's clean. I'm really? like, no. No, no, no. I <laughs> want to film that. We're going to put it on the site. <laughs> like, dude, you are. He's like, I think I can get Bravada. four grand for it. I was like, I will give you four grand today. <laughs> I will film it. I will flip it on the site. And I'll make three grand. <laughs> It has. Those, they had digital dashes. Yeah, yeah. And the turn signal. Would, Tell me, it's red with gold badges. It's green. Oh. It was like that dark green. Yeah, yeah. The turn signal on the digital dash, like, like flickers on. It pulses. It pulses. It is one of the. There, look at this beauty. Oh, that's the red. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I hate to say it because I've always said that the... Um, Look M- how well lined up that body kit is. <laughs> it's really... And the, the, it's, like, it's like the whole like, car is tilted. And so, <laughs> it's really wonky. That, the grill, though, is so flat. It but they just, just like took wall. the wheels off the Tahoe and they were like, yeah, use that. They were just like, here we go. We're just going to do this. Make it... And God, the, the investment must have been zero. Yeah. And, and the result was the return was basically zero. Yeah, yeah. The Escalade was really the first time they rebadged something and it worked, which yeah. was in 99. Yeah. Bravada, first gen Bravada. I would, I'd love to do uh, like a, a, a one of the Dustbuster vans yeah. as like a tube frame, like V eight rear wheel drive, just that like not cool. so SEMA build. 
Maybe Those the Kaizo cool. would do that. They are cool. Have you ever driven one? Yeah, I did a silhouette review. Do you yeah. know that it make it that have power doors? Yeah. And it plays a song when the doors close. What does Inst- the song sound it's like? It's like do 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 Instead of like telling you like stay clear of the doors with your hands, yeah. that's the their version of it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like do 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 do. I tried so hard to get my mom to buy one of those. And I made a, her go look at all three. And we got a Mil- Mercury Villager got instead. a Mercury Villager, which in hindsight- Was a better my vehicle. Mom, my mom, it was a better vehicle. Although this was mid-90s. The, the first one, her first Villager was a 92. Her second was a 96. You guys didn't want to pursue the Chryslers. In 96, no. Chrysler had dual sliding yeah, doors. Yeah, no, I, but but Mer- the dealer, it was the dealer. But dual sliding doors. I know, but the We same, go to our dealer friend same, or we get in the car on the driver's side. It was the same <laughs> dealer when, uh, as where I bought the Mountaineer. That's why. We, we, were, at a, we were a loyal family to this, this store. Jeez. We literally only, until, until my dad's Lexus, we only ever bought cars from within this store. And what, what, what was the tipping point on the Lexus? Was he just like, I cannot when the new, When the LS400 came out, it was like fucking Whoa! Right. Oh God, that was the first time that my dad expressed real interest in any car. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was wow. Look at look what this thing does. Interesting. And he was right. It look it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. First at first gen LS was like it was real spaceship. Especially if you look else. at what else was on sale in ninety. Oh, dude. Cadillac had the Fleetwood Brom that was yeah. like a literal box <laughs> yeah. with like those overstuffed couch yeah. seats. Even the, the the seven seven series of that was like yeah. was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And the S class was like look it went back to like the early eighties there at yeah. that time. Yeah. Yeah. That E thirty two seven series though, same engine from McLaren F one. Um something to think about. The the twelve cylinder. Yeah. Kind of. Now you know what you know. Kind, other vehicle kind used. of. You know not other re- really. No, but, yeah, like, pretty much. Not like really. That's like yeah. That's like the S six hundred was like yeah. It's a Zonda motor for sure. Oh yeah. yeah exactly. I, I agree. Exactly. I agree. You know what other car used that motor is the Italian design Columbus. Can we please? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you like, know about this car? Just like Christopher. Oh wow. But but can we look at that? Old look at that. Silhouette? That's a nice silhouette. Eleven grand. It's over eleven G's. Wow. That's when was this? Awesome. This is in February. I February wonder if that's past the statute of limitations where I can <laughs> say that the person paid too much. All right, pull, look at that! Wow, oh, I forgot about that. That's extraordinary. This is the finest concept car ever made. It actually kind of is. About a year ago, I it's sent a an email. Double decker fucking minivan. Double decker yeah. minivan. <laughs> you want to own your own train? Here you go. You got a single decker minivan? Yeah. Well, it's if actually a split level, by the way. If you're listening to the audio, can you climb from the front to the back? Yeah, inside? there's stairs. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a car with stairs in it. That's what you can <laughs> do. It's first class. I, I, about a year ago, after our deal closed with the site, I, I, I sent an email to Atal Design, and I said, look. <laughs> you know, look, I'm looking at a Carrera GT, <laughs> but if I, the Columbus is available. I'm dead serious. I said, listen, we both know you don't want this anymore. You do <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the shame of yeah. having this in your collection any longer. Right. And I do want it. Yeah. And I said, I will buy it from you. And they said, no, no, this is part of our permanent collection. <laughs> this is heritage. This is our heritage. That, go back to that photo, I Zach. swear to that God, photo of this the is cyclist, true. The, You can't see this cyclist's face. It's got the Columbus. The cyclist. There's a cyclist looking at it. And you can't see it. But I suspect his face is going, <laughs> What the this fuck? This probably wasn't even a staged picture. The cyclist <laughs> yeah. rode by and was like, what in oh God's God, name? Oh, my God, those seats, though. Look at that. That's are those TVs? Cool. Those are TVs in the back of the seats, front seats. Of course right? they are. This is a four. This is a four row V12. Now my understanding of this project is, is that it was, is that guy standing on the V12? What, are, what is that? A sunroof that's just it open? Is a over sun, the yeah, it's a sunroof. It's a four door. It's a, got a. It's got a clamshell tailgate. I begged them to sell this to me. I am not exaggerating. <laughs> I sent them an email and I heard back from them. We I had a dialogue and, yeah. and what we landed on was the next time I go to Italy, I could film it. a video. With okay. It. But I want it. That's not the same. Look how <laughs> That's not the same. Not the and same you know what they thing. also offered? They said, listen, if you love it so much, let's build you a new one. And I was thinking to myself, I no do not want way. a modern take on this. I want the terrible 1992 well, take on this. Well, when they said build you a new one, do they literally mean? Do let's design it and ground up oh, build no, it. And you, I think they go, think we'll, that we'll, I want to spend more on this than I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, oh, it's center drive? It's center, oh, yeah, it's center seats? drive? What do you think? This is not center, center drive. seat? Wow, that's amazing. Just out of curiosity. Whoa. Yeah. What did New Money Doug? <laughs> what do you think? What was in? I your... don't know. I honestly don't know. But if they had named a number that I think was reasonable, I probably would. Have. What would I you think have paid? I, what would <laughs> I have paid? Keep in mind, it's a McLaren F1 V12, sort of. Uh, and it's a oh, fuck. I if if <laughs> like I seats. was if I was New Money <laughs> Doug. Fuck? He looks at the center of the seat. And he's like that. Yeah. If I was New Money Doug. Yeah. 
I would have potentially paid 350,000 euros for that. Is that were you over or under that? I was that? hoping to be under that. Yeah. But but if they came back and said 350,000 euros, would you have would you have been like, okay. It would have started the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> you would have moved on to talking about shipping. You would, yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, would be hard. Yeah, yeah. It's Because this thing is massive and it presumably doesn't have a title or a VIN. So right. it's like a bill of yeah, sale. Yeah, you'd, have to, it. you'd have to That'd charter a, a C-130 <laughs> and then parachute it over San Diego. <laughs> Everything about cool. I, I want to drive it across the country. That'd be, that'd be fun. It's like a weird, spacey RV. The story I heard about this, and I'm not sure if it's true, was that BMW and a tab design were working together on it. And once BMW got the wind of what it looked like... It's how Design said, they we're, we're working like, on a special nope. project. It's center drive. Will you send us an engine? <laughs> Will you send us a V12? And they were like, oh, okay, yeah. And then they showed them this, <laughs> and BMW was like, punching out. <laughs> Sorry, you're not, actually, this one is just you. Please don't tell anybody that we put the engine in it, by the that's way. That's fucking so But they even cool, told me though. that it runs and drives. That's awesome. Remember when concept cars ran and drove? I mean, barely, because it's been yeah. so long. I mean, concept cars aren't something that automakers put money into anymore. Yeah. I'm like the only guy in the world who likes concept cars, and I, I really I love want them. to buy an old concept car. You know who, I mean, have you met um, um, Philip Seraphim? You know, the Myers Manx dude. He's got like great old concept cars, great, though. Awesome I don't concept even, cars. I can't afford like an Aston Martin Bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take like the, the 1994 Ford Taurus concept, <laughs> previewing what the 96 Taurus was going to yeah, look yeah, like. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. the level I'd be willing yeah. to be on. Well, I told you that my, my aunt worked for Ford back in the day, right? And the Mustang Mach 3 concept was oh, a yeah. running, driving concept. What happened to that? I, I, we took it home one day. I went to visit my aunt in Detroit, and it was um, it was a con. On t- it showed the new styling. It was an it was a Fox body underneath. Yeah, and it showed the new styling, but it also had neon tail lights and xenon headlights. That's it. And it was the I remember first, it. I had a, a model yeah. of it. It was in video games. Yeah, it was the first car to have xenon. First American car to have xenon headlights. It was a prototype and had neon tail lights. And we she took it home. And we drove around in it, and people went ape shit. It had an M. Totally. Look at the tail lights. When it had the whole trunk was full of computers and batteries. You couldn't put anything in there. In 08, when GM had their troubles, we'll call them. <laughs> the they auctioned off at Barrett Jackson that year. They auctioned off a hundred concept cars. Whoa. I think I remember that. A bunch of the ones from Demolition Man got auctioned off. SEMA cars, yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. Some of them were desirable, yeah. but some of them were like not. Yeah. And I Carfaxed them years later and people were like dailying them. <laughs> like a geo tracker that had been kitted up for SEMA. So it was just like getting tire services at like yeah, yeah, discount yeah. tire in Phoenix. <laughs> but um, I miss that boat. Mm-hmm. I wish I had done that. Automakers don't want to get rid of these things because there's tons of liability. There's a liability, yeah. They won't even sell you like... I tried to buy a, a the car a car they were going to crush. They were going to crush a, the 2011 GT500 that I drove because it was pre-pro. They couldn't sell yeah. it. I go, dude, sell me the engine. I'll pu- I'm going to put it in a Fox body. Like, I'll I'll sign any fucking waiver you right. want. And look at that. This is your article. <laughs> My uh, article. Also, but keep going. Oh, well, go through these pictures. Look at that. Look at that beauty. I would have bought that. No, but it goes. Okay, they're all. Ooh. Oh, the Camaro cop car. Yeah, okay. that's all right. What else Shoot. you got? F body. Uh, that's no. This though. that's that. Oh, yeah. the Impala and SS that. wagon. Look at that. Oh my god, that I want. Wow. Whoever has this. Okay, what if you can't so that, see it right now, but oh you own this car? Oh my god. This looks appears to be a Chevy Tahoe that has been turned into a two door and turned into a an Amigo convertible. It's a, it's a Tahoe Amigo. <laughs> that's it's what a, I want. And look at those <laughs> period correct ta- wheels. Yeah, that's a Tahoe Amigo. I want that, and I'm willing to pay what it's worth, which is ninety one hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's a is <laughs> that the, that's that like was. the Metro like high speed. It's like a Metro LSI or something. It's like a fast Geo Metro. Who knows? That's what, a that's just some a sort of engine rims. was in that. Yeah, probably. Uh, that was. I think that was the first Aztec. I think that was the very, the first, very Aztec. first Aztec. Yeah. yeah. And I think that was like Should the first Saturn or the first Saturn SL or something. Yeah. And the premium that they got for those was like a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. They're like, this is just a Saturn. <laughs> this is a car. Bro. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is a regular a car. Ass car. <laughs> Oh, um, that would have been so good. I really want to The Impala car. SS wagon was cool. You could build that. You know, you one could recreate that if they really wanted to. Do you know to, that but... in Canada they built a Mercury Sable SHO wagon? Oh, that's pretty cool. Or a Mercury Sable SHO, and then they also built a Taurus SHO wagon as a concept. The Sable SHOs existed. There were like 100 of them in Canada. But then um, the Taurus SHO wagon, they only made one concept. Didn't they do... 
No, they never did the Frog Eye SHO as a wagon, did they? No, no they didn't. They did do a Frog Eye Taurus wagon. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. Hayden well, Car. That's when quite I, a look shit. Look at that. That's not great. It, this, look at that some, beauty. This 80s Sable SHO wagon doesn't look great. This needs some refinement. Let me tell you something. It Nothing <laughs> is sketchier than a South Dakota license plate. You, <laughs> Montana is sketchy. South Dakota is the new, I can't even afford it. <laughs> Why is South Dakota sketchy? My, South Dakota will do the same thing Montana does, but the companies that do it are, oh. like, really sketchy. Okay. And so guys do it to get, like, plates for their ATVs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But then also their <laughs> Mercury Sable. Yeah, Montana's, like, like, Montana's pure Dakota. tax evasion. Right. South Dakota's, like, this would not be legal anywhere <laughs> totally. else. Totally. Yeah. And people do that. Yeah. And, it is. and so now South Dakota has become, like, the new I'm even sketchier than Montana yeah. state. <laughs> Good to know. Right. Good tip. Right. All Something right. for you to consider in the future. The uh, I tell people a lot to not buy Florida titled cars because they'll title fucking anything. They I don't, don't buy any car that has a Florida, any Florida in the Carfax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if it was 20 years ago. The Million Mile Lexus <laughs> came from Florida. Of course. Yeah. And when I, I got pulled over for uh, in, in California for what I refer to as a DWB because it was, the w- windows were up. And when I rolled the windows down and the officer clearly was like, had like an oh you're white expression <laughs> and he was like what and, I, and he was like your windows are tinted too dark and I was like I'm sorry sir I just bought this from Florida <laughs> and I had the old Florida registration and I was like see and he was like ugh okay <laughs> <laughs> and he was like let me go and now it's back in Florida Maybe with Freddie with Freddie who hasn't done anything really fun with it Can like we he promised Freddy? he would uh, uh oh <laughs> yeah he's got this McLaren P1 I know <laughs> Is he the most I, insane person? Okay, all of the people are insane. Yeah, you yeah, agree? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Hoovy and even the Throttle House guys who seem pretty reasonable, but they're insane. Yeah. You, I'm not that insane. I agree. I think I'm pretty reasonable, which is that why my YouTube numbers have suffered. <laughs> <laughs> but like of all of them. Yeah, he's the most insane. He's the most insane. I mean, he's he has taken on a project that like almost is incompletable. Right. Um, and he's and he into a loan it to hundreds do it. of thousands <laughs> he of took dollars. A loan on to do it, which is crazy. <laughs> Um, he seems like he's getting somewhere. He right. came to visit us recently. They have an engine. They right. built. They they rebuilt an engine. Right. So there's that. But he's going to not do the hybrid thing. Is that the la- the latest plan? Is bailing mm. on the hybrid? Because I mean, it, it was, was always ba- it was the battery happen. pack. And apparently those battery packs are problematic just generally, even if the car hasn't yeah, been on the Yeah, yeah they, he's telling us the forums are filled with people that when they first bought the cars were looking for new packs. And then they age, they also age out after a few years kind of quickly. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. A, that's good. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is why... Our analog cars yes. are going to retain their value. Yeah. Yours would retain more if you went back to stock wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I have them. It'll it, when I list it. Yeah, on, better when I list it on cars and bids. It will come with stock wheels. But uh, the analog cars are going to retain value. All these cars, I'd be terrified. La Ferrari. As far as I'm concerned, oh, the Ferrari supercar set ends with the Enzo. Because uh, after that, or maybe we, four five eight special, well, maybe SP three. Uh, after that, SP three. SP three is the coolest car that exists. <laughs> SP three is very good. I and wish the, I could and have an the, SP3. the the the, the SP one. But it's kind of you can't use like no, you of course you can't. But SP three like, is like cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. a lot Ferrari it's, it's without beautiful. the hybrid. Yeah, and it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's the jam. But like you can't drive. No money, Doug should really get one. You know what they cost? I think like five million dollars. Sticker is two and a half. <laughs> yeah, so I don't even know what. Because I don't have a relationship with But you have to also (laughs) own an SP1 and an SP2 to get one. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if you have to own both, but you have to own one or the other. One or the other to get one. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not going to. It's not going to. They now have their own self hamster wheeling ecosystem of. Yeah, you know, you don't want, you have to buy the next thing, because yep. then they won't let you buy the next. Which thing. was always sort of the deal, but like now it's they're, mm. they're just like open officially, about it. Officially, officially, the it's deal. It's wild yeah. how people go down that road. I asked my Ferrari dealer, like, what would I have to spend to like get to that tier? Yeah. And he told me I'd have to like lose a million bucks, <laughs> like but with all the trade backs and and because some of the cars don't really yeah, retain yeah, their yeah, value yeah. and all that. He said after a million you'd bucks, have to lose you'd a be million. in. <laughs> And I was like, you'd have to let us fuck you for a million. But then, and then you can we'll... then you can flip, start flipping the good stuff and right, make right, money. Right, but the problem yeah. is, that's a lot of money to put out there, assuming the good stuff will continue to be worth more. Right. Yeah. Because some of it isn't. Like the SF90 is dead in the water. Yeah. The only car deader mm-hmm. than the SF90 yeah. is the Hummer EV. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you rather have less? I think I'd rather have a Hummer EV less than an SF90 because it's not like objectively on the surface, it's not a bad car. It's a bad Ferrari, but it's not a bad car. I, that's true, both of them. 
I think. Ooh, right. The, the EV Hummer isn't a bad Hummer. <laughs> it's just a bad car. <laughs> I. It, that's so funny that General Motors took this wait and see approach for off road pickup trucks for 10 years. Yeah. The Raptor comes out in 13, and General Motors is like, eh. Raptor not came sure. out in 09. Was it, oh yeah, was it 10? Uh, as a 2010 model, yeah. Okay, so for 15 years, General Motors is like, eh, we're not sure. We think this is a passing fad. We're going to wait. Toyota comes out, TRD Pro, you know, all these other off-road. Yeah. The, the Hyundai uh, Santa Fe now looks like a... <laughs> and finally, GM jumps in, just as the economy tanks with an electric vehicle that nobody wants. It's yeah. like so deep GM Yeah. to screw up the timing on I that. I mean, they also they do have the ZR2, like Silverado and stuff, but they're, they're, but neither one are as hardcore as the Raptor. The and they Colorado don't do the is the it. closest. The, yes. the Silverado version is just, it's nowhere near. And that's such a great example True. of what GM does. They look at the Raptor and they're like, well, let's do a less expensive, yeah, less yeah. trying, like let's just kind of pull it back a little mm-hmm. bit. Not realizing that that's the reason that people want yeah. the Raptor. Yeah. And so now here we are. Hummer EVs are go to the go to the site. I think didn't they have problems with the Ultium batteries though? Like they're having yes. they're having with delivery the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where do you want me to go? To cars and bits. Oh. But the are they oh. they're, they're not doing well. I'll at cars show you. You'll be blown away by the last one. At how bad Just type it was. In Hummer EV up there. Yeah. Did it was it worse than the boom? Loom? That's a non first edition. So that's so like a non white one. So you finally got one hundred ten thousand. One hundred ten. Scroll to the bottom. I probably shouldn't be. The very okay. the very first one. The very Dude, first one. Keep wow. going. Keep going down. By the way, this is a year. Okay, go keep, to the next keep. page. We were getting 250 Holy a year ago. Moly. That first one, 235, 260, 260, 235. April of 2022. For a white That pickup. is 18, 16 months. And it's less than half. Half. Holy wow. Crap. That's pretty brutal. Half. That's pretty brutal. We sold that one for 111 I will say that my client bought a Lucid Air uh, GT. Sticker price was one eighty two. Oh, sold it. Yeah, uh, on bring a trailer uh, for a hundred. Yeah, after seventeen hundred miles. The difference <gasps> between Lucid and Rivian is that Rivian priced the cars in a way that the people could make some money flipping them, and Lucid priced the cars so that Lucid would make all the money. Yeah. The question that I have is: Are people still paying sticker for Lucid? Like, it's not a dealer yeah. model where you can negotiate, but surely they must be negotiating in some capacity because there's no way they're selling these cars for those n- I numbers can't, anymore. No, I can't there's believe no they way. are. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't That's know. a lot of car, by the way, for what they're starting to come down to. Oh, uh, this car <clears throat> was brand new. It has 1,700 miles on it. It was four months old. Oh. It spent, and it spent all, all but three weekends here in my climate-controlled garage. Oh. It was a brand new car. And the dude nose lost 100? To, nose to tail paint protection film. The car was minty, 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 mint. As of five days ago, it looks like Lucid discounted uh, some of their cars by ten grand off MSRP. What is the last Lucid that we that we sold? I'm curious because I, I, we've been selling them for less. I mean, obviously everyone has. <laughs> it's very <laughs> funny. I was just looking at that Hummer EV, and uh, God damn it. it's uh, the color was void black, which I think is, is very. Funny. Look at that. That pure 63. I mean, the wow. dude didn't let it go for 63. He probably should have. But like, it, it, at some point. They're starting to become, it's starting to be like, eh, yeah. this kind of yeah. works, <laughs> kind of makes some sense. Because that is a really nice car. Oh, no, I'm nice sorry. Car. It wasn't Cars and Bids. That white one is my client's car from April of last year. You mean that's, it wasn't that's my, each other. I'm It was sorry. Cars and Bids. I, it was sold on Cars and Bids. I apologize. 99.5. I wonder yeah. what they'd be going the for MSR, now. The MSRP was $180,000 in that car. Is that a 959 up there? Yeah. It what? was Paul Allen's 959. Well, you got 959 sitting around it, here? Yeah, my client had, had Can one. I tell you what me and it's my friends... It's amazing. He drove that car, too. Refer to the 959 as? Puffy 911. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hannah, there's, now there's some marshmallow to it. My yeah. wife called that car the beluga whale, which is it, it, it very much is. Especially the white one. Did yeah, it have yeah. the white wheels? White, white, blue interior. Yeah. Blue interior? Yeah. That's one of the three show and display cars. It was one of the cars... Really? Yeah. That those guys got... Very. It was Paul Allen's car. It's a very, very special car. And it won uh, Best 959 at the uh, Amelia Island Concourse last year. Tell me that doesn't look like a puffy 911. It does. It looks like a 911. <laughs> but, you, but, <laughs> but you've driven one, right? I loved it. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. They're so cool. You know what hit me the other day with Courier GT? I think that the next collection is going to be the Porsches, the Porsche supercars. Because now you get a 959, a Courier GT, yeah. and a 918, and yeah. they're all very special. And like having <laughs> all three. And that's going to help the values of those because it's the rarest of the three. But I think like Porsche has become such a thing that like yeah. that's where collectors well, are going to start We saw that going. guy who's dumping like 90 white Porsches, That was right? bizarre. Yeah. 
Can you what imagine is that? having that many like delivery mileage cars? It's just, just weird. The, so there's weird. Some, some mental illness there. It, like really, I truly think it's like, like hoarding, but you're rich yeah. enough where you have people yeah. to clean. Right. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> it is shit. exactly that. Yeah. And then a new a 718 base comes out, and you're like, got to get it white. The yeah. only <laughs> thing he wants to own is a collection of white Germans. <laughs> Pinnacle <laughs> Porsche very... collection, 63 cars, 56 Porsches. But you know that RM sold off the white Cayenne that he surely had, and the white... I mean, come on, right? Like, surely that happened. It was at a Mecham on a Thursday. <laughs> In the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's and look at his like white tables and chairs there. Like you're hoarding, but you're just rich enough. It's so true. <laughs> that is exactly yeah. what it is. Well, that's the thing about hoarders. Like hoarders, they're never rich because if they were rich, <laughs> they would just hoard more. They would hoard. They would hoard more expensive things, and they'd have people to to mask their hoarding right. with cleanliness. Right. You know. Uh, but I mean, don't get me wrong. Like these cars all look dope. Okay, yeah, no, but, it's a cool thing. I but just to have all those cars, and uh, from what I've read about this, because this was very heavily publicized, most of these cars are delivery mileage cars. Yeah, that's what I read too. Which is a fucking bummer. I'm getting to a point in my life where I'm starting to sell things. I'm going to sell my convertible G wagon. You heard it here <sighs> first. Wow, big moment. Your are favorite you, vehicle. Are you just not using it very much? I think I think when I was 12, I would look at people who had 80 cars and be like, I want to yeah. be like that guy. Uh -huh. And now that I'm here, I'm like, I don't want to deal with this crap. Yeah. At some point, I just want to sit there and be like, I don't, this isn't my life, insuring, maintaining. Yeah. Even it's not that, it, the G is pretty reliable, but just like the whole thing, de taking it up to fill, you know, doing the, it's all just like, I'm, I'm just ready yeah. to kind of. Well, at a certain point, you run out of time. You run out of time, yeah. and I don't care enough about, so like, I just, and I don't want to be a collector or a hoarder. Like a lot of these people like that, Yeah. that looks horrible to me. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine. So then you start hiring people. Then you got to build a space. Yeah, yeah. He's going to lose money on these cars, no matter how much money they make, because the cost to do all this yeah. was so significant. And it's just like, I don't want to be that guy. I want to have a few cars that I use. Yeah. And if I'm not using it... <sighs> yeah, I'm at the limit. How many do you have? Uh, eight total. I have nine. And, and, and I think that's and it, that is, I think, that's about like a hard limit for me. Uh, and I started an entire bit infrastructure heavy business, you know, to deal with my compulsion to buy cars. And I can feel myself wanting more cars, but like I, but I know I can't. And, and it just hit me that like I, I kind of know how they all drive, and I yeah. just don't need to own it to have that to be mm. able to go up to one at Cars and Coffee and be like, "Hey, man, cool car. That's awesome. Wish I had one. Don't." But like, and that's and the other problem with us is we actually we get to taste. A right, lot. Right. I get to taste all the new shit. Right. You get to taste some old shit, some classic shit, some tuner shit. Like, right. And so, and that takes time too. That's driving time. Yeah. And so, like, you, I'm, I, it's tempting to, to do an upward consolidation into one monster. That's the thing. So, so that I drive all the time. Right. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, I got the Countach, a Ford GT, and a Courage GT. That is the coolest lineup. Yeah, of that's pretty rad. I'm good. Yeah. Well, I, I do not need to add like little weird, like that stupid A class that I bought, which was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my entire life. You know really? what? Really? Yeah, I saw it, but like, how bad could it be? Take as bad as you think it is and triple it. Really? And then triple that. No way. <laughs> it's so boring. We took it around Chuck Walla. <laughs> <laughs> and it made that boring. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, by the end of the, the race, it was like, well, when Americans go to Europe, we see these around all the time. These first gen little A classes, and we go, that looks like it could be fun. Which I bet is what you thought. That's too. exactly what I thought. I'm in this car for twenty thousand oh, dollars. It costs twenty two hundred dollars to buy. Oh my god! And it, it, this wait, is... wait, 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 back it up. You, it costs twenty two hundred to buy. Yeah. And you're in it for twenty thousand. Do you know Rami at Inbound Motorsports? Do you know no, him? but I, I okay. think I. He's like my I, guy who I, I used might to have import written cars. him a monster check for something <laughs> from what you're telling me. I don't fucking know. He's the guy I used to import cars, and basically it's a great the, name for a company. The way, inbound, inbound Motorsports, Motorsports. It feels right. It's, it's a fucking good name. The way that I approach cars with him, I called him in January, yeah. and I said, Rami, I want this summer on Intake, I want an A class. I want it to be great. And he said, All right. And then. Like eight weeks later, ten weeks later, after he had, just, and I want a weird color. Yeah. And like ten weeks later, after he had looked at a lot of bad a pink ones that were rusty, yeah. he texted me and I bought your here's your A class. And then he sent it to New Jersey where he is, and he did paint correction and ceramic and all this stuff because I was like, <laughs> I want it to be nice. I cannot yeah. break down an Antigua. Yeah, that's and, another problem. And then it was wanting it to be nice. And then it was it is trashed. And I just this is the thing that the tipping point. By in my trash, life. do you mean? 
it doesn't function this properly. Is the, no, no, or it, this it is the functions nicest. exactly like it should. <laughs> yes, and it's still heinous. It's in the wrong environment. That's the problem. You brought it somewhere where there's lots of space. In Prague, this would make sense. Yes. In Prague, it would make sense. <laughs> but you have it on Nantucket, where there's not lots. of I space. I had it there. Now I have it out here. It's not good. And the the problem. And by the way, I'm selling it on Cars and Bits. <laughs> What's bad about <laughs> Someone it? Someone go buy it. So it's just slow and boring. Oh, okay. And everybody's like, drive a slow car fast. That's fun. There's a limit to that. <laughs> if it's too slow, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is actually not fun. Sure. And this has only 80 horsepower, front wheel drive, deep understeer. That's too slow. Yeah. Yeah. A slow car fast means like... A Mini. Yeah. Or a GTI or a Peugeot 106 or something. It does not mean slow, you know what, slow you know what, and heavy. You know what got me? Go to the next picture in this in this set. You know what got me? That rear window the, the wraparound, wraparound triangle. triangle. Yeah. I thought to myself, that looks cool. And actually the wheels are cool. Yeah. I like the wheels and a lot. And you know what? When I bought it, it had four of those. Their hubcaps had four of them on it. When we and got it to New caps. Jersey, it had one. So we had to replace them all. <laughs> no. So that was another hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. Well, I mean, sure. And it, so I've just realized I don't need to have these experiences anymore. No, no. It's not, not for worth 20, it. It's not worth it. Or even if I had only got it for 2200 which is what it cost, and then shipped it here and was in it for eight grand, it would yeah. still be like, why did I? It's still more stuff. I yeah. had to sit at the Nantucket DMV for uh, three hours trying to register this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what am I doing? Yeah. This is like a waste of my time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. You, you should only, like, having a car... It should be like a real like the like the Countach, the Courage GT, and the Ford GT. You take them out. That's an experience right. that's really worth having. Right. Anything south of that, <laughs> and like classic Mercedes are a great example because I had my R one two nine SL. Yeah. It looked amazing. Totally. It looked incredible. It was built well. I mean, you, I look look at it parked across the street, and I go, especially with the hard top on, I go, yep. yes. Yep. And then I drove it, and like you said, with your five hundred E. You drive it and you go, oh, okay. Well, it's just it's a regular car with an automatic gearbox, and and that's sort of the end of it. And honestly, you can look at it at Cars and Coffee where they show up, <laughs> yeah. or on our site, or bring a trailer, or whatever, yeah. and just kind of look at it. Yeah, yeah. And like that's how I think I'm gonna approach these in the future. Yeah. I will be sad to be out of the G Cabrio Club with Kendall Jenner. Shout out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but like you'll but probably like, fucking triple up on that. At least. I don't know. Uh, the market's slowed because also the other thing is they're now importable. Like you oh, don't have to federalize them anymore. Okay. But also I don't – it's not about – I just need it. I just – I have those three supercars and now I have two kids. We're about to have a second one. And it's just like I don't want to participate in the – I'm going to – if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to still hold on to crazy cars, they better be crazy. They better be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They better be crazy. I'm going to keep my 328 Ferrari because it is just scruffy enough that I can use it all the time as a car. Yeah. Um, and which is great. Which is that great. It's, that is, that that's, is another, the, that's how that's I feel about the, the Ford best. GT. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. The car's got 45,000 miles on it. I am free to not really give that much of a fuck. Right. It's been painted four times. Right. Great. I mean, that's, that's kind of the five. dream, honestly. Well, I wish I had gotten a Courier GT with higher miles that I could, like, use a little more. That's, like, one of my favorite. Don't you drive yours a lot, though? Yeah, but I probably shouldn't. Yeah, you can. It You're had 10,000 miles. I wish new I had 30,000 miles. You know, Merit Partners in, in Atlanta, who's like got, who's a big career GT dealer, they have one with 33,000 miles. Really? Right I you think just... you can trade it and get cash trade Probably. up and get cash back? <laughs> but I've already done all this stuff to my career GT. I put in Bluetooth and heated seats, which I think we all agree. is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I put in a little. I actually don't like the Bluetooth. I I just I like the iPod plug. Just I would have done me, that. Give me the hard plug. I would have done I'm that good. in a heartbeat. Yeah. But it had that weird. <clears throat> the Courage GT has a very distinctive uh, head unit uh -huh. that only fit that car. Right, right. Oh, and so there wasn't like a place. I mean, I wasn't right. going to drill. Into well, the, the N my NSX had. It's all. It's all one piece. Doesn't that it dash. have an aux? No. What it has is a CD changer, and there's a module. That you can convert, so I have that. I convert. I don't have a. I, I can't play CDs in the changer anymore. But <laughs> so I, you've done a I, few mods to that car, basically. The, just the wheels, <laughs> the wheels and the CD and the iPod. No is longer it. stock and suspension. Uh, the, I didn't. I didn't do any suspension. The uh, the the guy I bought it from. 300 miles before I bought it, put in new Bilstein dampers. Oh, okay. And so I it, it has. Springs too. Okay. No, it just has Bilstein dampers and. Uh, and I, because I wanted to try to change the ride height, and they were like, "You have to go coilovers." And I was like, "Nah, no, but just Bill Steen." Change the ride height. What is wrong with you? Enjoy this. I wanted car. to raise it. God, no, no, really? I wanted to raise it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to change it lower. I wanted to raise it, <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, you need coilovers." When to do you're that. getting older. Yeah. Um, what was I it wanted... like driving your Courage GT at Chuckwalla? 
Oh, yeah, your first tr- ever track day. No, is I've that, done some track days. Is that a It scoop? was a couple of my buddies' okay. first track days, though. Yeah. Mm. That was my Kenan had never Kenan. been on the track. Oh, before. really? Okay. Okay, Kenan, I don't know how you guys know Chuck Walla, but we, we showed well. up there and we just, we somehow on the internet found this list. Of t- of the fastest times, and Randy Popes had said all these times, yeah. including like two o three in an Audi TTS. Yeah, <laughs> and Mom, so we were like, "That's pretty fast." We were like, "We're gonna take down Randy." <laughs> Career GT, Ford GT, Murcielago, Boxster Spider. We didn't get close. Yeah. To, wow. Not just to Randy Popes, to him in a TTS. Yeah, okay? yeah. But Kennan did a two forty. In his E39 M5, uh-huh. he's like the slow, you know, everything is methodical. I did a 250 in the A class. <laughs> <laughs> I told him if I beat him in the A class, he would have to take it. <laughs> he has five it times then. the horsepower in the M5, right? <laughs> That's really funny. Literally five times. Wow. I don't remember when we raced, uh, uh, Le- was it Lemons or Chump that we did at Chuck Walla? I think you did Lemons. I think man. I did Lemons in that yellow Civic, right? I don't remember what my lap times were. That was like 2010. It was a long long time time ago. ago. It's a really fun track, though, isn't it? It's a fun track. And it's safe. To to answer your question about Crazy GT, that car is made for that stuff. It is incredible. It is so precise and so amazing. And yet, I was like five seconds faster in the Ford GT because in the mm-hmm. Carrera GT, I'm just You're just terrified. too nervous? I'm too nervous. Yeah. I think I would need a lot more money to feel comfortable driving the Carrera GT how I drove the Ford GT. Sure. Ford GT, I beat on. Well, you've driven it. You also owned it a long time. Yeah, so you're probably a lot more familiar with it. Totally. But like Career GT, I'm just not going to test out a braking line. I'm not going to go hard. You know, it's just not going to occur. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so I drove it, but like on the straights, I was like, I've barely even floored it. Like I'm just, I'm just, I got up to high RPMs and all that, but like I was clearly behind what I could have done. But mentally you just can't. You think you can and then you can't. You, it needs to be someone else's car. <laughs> it only, needs to, or the just, only way I could do I I can't I am not capable of driving my own cars and in any of them in a the manner that I am easily capable of driving much higher performing press cars. You give me like my NSX on a racetrack versus a seven six five LT press car. And my mental state is like just yep. completely well, different. Press car, totally. Disposable in a way. I mean, yeah. like God forbid something happens, they yeah. make more of them. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you spent so much time and money I on know, like, the spider. And, and that's exactly perfect. what hit me driving yeah. that Courage GT. Like, I can't have yeah. any risk here. Yeah. And so I felt like I wasn't, but I was probably ten seconds off what a good driver could have done. And that's a lot on a track like that. I mean, yeah. that's a real amount of time. But it's still it was still fun. I oh, think. it was so much fun. And I and especially in the Ford GT, I just beat the crap out of that car and it really did it. What tires do you have on that car? Do you know? The, whatever the Ford GT group recommends, which is actually a different non matched set mismatch. of front rears. Yeah, because getting matched tires for that car is basically impossible, right? I think it is, but also I think they've like done all these tests and everything. The Ford GT forums are Yeah, they're insane. And so the, the everybody buys the same ones, and uh-huh. I have those, and they're new. They're, both cars had new tires. I'd be interested to see what they were, because people ask me about Ford GT tires. There's a, a Ferrari lot. tire. The back is a Ferrari tire. It's like literally like the Bridgestone Scuderia something or other. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it was the rear on the Enzo actually. Oh, interesting. And then the front is something else. But it's, yeah. if you go on the forums, it's like the the consensus on every forum on the every good thread. The years that came on that car new were heinous. They were awful. Everybody was crashing them. I mean, if it if it rains for ten seconds, they're all just flying into telephone poles, and then and then they stop making anything in them in a match size because the stagger is like crazy with the front and the rear. Oh, it's that. insane. And so I had two clients, and it was like it was impossible to get tires for them. I was calling all over the place, and eventually we found some match set, but it was not a very good quality. It was just like whatever was available. Right. Um, I'd be interested to know whenever whenever you take have fucking that or someone at the cave send, <laughs> Just me, take a little send me a photo of the tires. Um, it is fun though getting on a track and like really being able to do that stuff especially yeah. with those cars. The guy with the Boxster Spider was the fastest of all of us though. That car is like made for that. Yeah. yeah. In an I mean, incredible way. It's so easy to carry pace in yeah. one of those cars on a track. Yeah. And Chuck Wall is really great because it's a lot of fast, kind of sweeping, flowing corners. There's only one really heavy braking zone. It's a, it's, it's pretty easy on cars. Yeah. That track. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're Although not... I think it does um, inherently kind of is a little inherently biased towards cars like that Boxster Spider. There's not r- a really long straight. You right. can't really exploit an enormous amount of power. Um, but it is a. It is Did a... you run clockwise or counterclockwise? We ran counterclockwise, I believe. Yeah. No. Clockwise. You came out of the pits to the right. No, we came out of the pits to the left. That's but depends on what depends on what direction. If you're, you're in the paddock <laughs> facing the track, <laughs> are the cars passing on the front straight from left to right? No, or from, from right, right to left. From right to left. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's clockwise. 
Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I was I was it's really, fun really both directions. It. Terrifying Kroger though, just utterly terrifying. But you know what the most terrifying part was that whole day, loading the car on the transport. <laughs> you ever do that? You yeah. probably do it all the time. Yeah, I do it all the time. Oh my god! It's it's. Did you reload it onto a semi? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's tough. Okay, so go to the, the next did picture. Did you climb out the window of the 4GT? I had the guy do the 4GT. I didn't want any part of that. But but go to the go to the next picture. There's one coming up where so I— So uh... back in the day when I worked at the rental company, we had to load the 4GT into the trailers all the time. Oh, and it's a complete And you nightmare. cannot open the door. Right. And so this was when I was fat. And I mean, like, <laughs> not—I not, mean, I, I was like 300 pounds fat. And I had to crawl out the window of a 4GT at 300 pounds. It was the most. It was and like the window a, is small. It was like a manatee. Yeah, four GT <laughs> windows are really small. It's like pulling a nine five nine out of a really, garage. It was really, really bad. <laughs> right. It was really. Go terrible. to the next one. Go to the next one. So, here's what happened. Oh, sorry. One more. Uh, there's a million. Pay- okay, that. So the door can't open there because there's chain. And I had the guy do it, but for the crew GT, I did the same thing. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The moment you make the transition. From the truck to the platform. Yeah. And then when the front wheels make it. Yeah, yeah. And it's like. <laughs> yeah, we've all seen those videos. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Had the Corvette falling off of it. And I'm like inching, and the guy's like, you're good, keep going. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, I'm, you know, you, you look at it from here, and like, that car's Sir, I'm literally from... shitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot of room for air. You know, no, there's two there feet. really is, is not, not a, lot a lot of room yeah. for air, and yeah. it's terrifying. Yeah. In the Crow GT, especially. And I'm just like, I love that car deeply. It is the greatest car I've ever driven. It's it's a little anxiety inducing. Yeah. Anytime you do anything with it, which kind of sucks. I really wish it was a lot cheaper. It's funny that that when I first got my Countach, it I felt like that. Yeah. It made me really nervous. Everything I did with it, and that did kind of subside after a while. Well, your cost basis changed. Too. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day. No, it, it, it was when car it like, doubled in value. Right. I mean, yeah. If I it was suddenly worth twelve million, I'd probably sell it. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, can we discuss Countach's for a second? I yeah. want to make a point here that I have been thinking about. And I've I made it in a video, but no one really latched on. And I want to I want to really drive this point home. Okay. God, people are getting out of there's there are some number of people who had Countach's on as poster cars when they were kids. Purchase one as adults. Yeah. And then it's in my opinion, it is too much car for them. And I've noticed a lot of these rich guys who have Senna's mm-hmm. and who have P1's and who have whatever, who just expect that the, they get in and the car has a keyless co- entry and it communicates with the – and they start it up and they just back down their driveway and leave with their backup camera. They get one of these and it's not like that. Yeah. And they're like – they're they're done. They're like out of it. The Hamilton Collection just sold – there, Countach, after pouring hundreds of thousands of dollars into it with George Evans, because their collection is 918s and things like that. And I'm sitting here, and I love this aspect of the yeah. car. But I really, it's one of the most interesting things that I have noticed recently. And they're not the only ones. I bought this car from a guy who had all the new stuff, and he wanted one old car, and he, it just wasn't. He couldn't. He like it, it, like the concept of turning on the thing, waiting for the fuel pump to go, et cetera, et cetera. It just well, wasn't. Yeah, I saw. I've seen your video on how you start yours. It makes yeah. me very happy. My car has fuel injection, fuel injection. because you know what but I do. Regardless, I get in the key, car and then I turn the key and it starts. But regardless, that's, you that's still it. are putting up with more stuff yeah, than yeah. a Senna. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I find this to be one of the most interesting things that is happening about this car. People have idolized it forever, and when they come face to face with the reality of owning something, this is the difference. It's the, it truly marks the difference between someone. Who who is rich and someone who is rich and an enthusiast. Yeah. Mm. And if you're just rich, this ain't the car. Right. If yeah. you're rich and willing to like make some sacrifices for yeah. what I think is the is a car that is 10 times better than a Senna or all those dumb cars. This is that. Yeah. But th- but it is interesting to me that there is a d- It's subset. weird that it surprises people though it surprises people. all the things about it that are quote annoying are right in front of you. Right. You don't learn them later. <laughs> right. You know them. You learn them from day one. I think people think that hey, it's so cool. I'll just get over that. Whatever. No, I it's like. Hard. I like the sacrifice. And I the, like right. the vice of all of it. These guys who yeah. just want to write a check for the newest thing, the 918, yeah. which I think is kind of a BS car. Like the guys who want to do that stuff. This ain't their car. As long as it doesn't like overheat in traffic, you know what I mean. Like that's it has if, to perform as a vehicle. It, it has to work as a but, car. But, but it's but, you, there are shops you can take it to that will get it to perform sure, as a car. If it works properly, if if it's if it's if it's sorted right. and and running right, there's no reason. But it shouldn't what it work will never do 
is have a backup camera, yeah, yeah. keyless entry, yeah. Bluetooth, all that stuff, it will never be. Yeah. And so some people can't handle it. Yeah. And I think that that's like a true reality of the Countach. But then they come to me and they say, well, it's terrible because you hear that from the people who sell it. Yeah. Who sell them. And I just think like it, it's, it's terrible to those people. But to me, yeah. I drove all the new stuff and specifically went for this. Yeah. Did you drive older cars or imperfect cars when you were younger? Like, well, you, like, like just generally? Just older anything. Cars? Yeah. Yeah. Anything that didn't work perfectly. Did yeah. you drive that when you were younger? I'm wondering if, if you're more used to it, whereas someone who gets rich, like if their first experience to a supercar. Oh, that's an car interesting point. Because the, is, the new supercars are daily drivable, right? Yeah. That's a, that's a relatively new thing in the last, what, 15 years? Yeah. So if your first experience to supercars is that. You go, oh, well, this is how they are. That's and then an you go back point. in time and you that's, forget. That's probably exactly what's happening. And I think that these people think that it was always like that or mm-hmm. that they could – I think the real mistake is they think that if they spent enough money on this car, right. they, yeah, they, they could, could make, make it, like, it that. like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you can't. Yeah, you can't. To me, that's the benefit. That's I, yeah. the cool I, thing I, about I want, it. I want to immerse myself in the car in a way that new cars do not – Right. You know, I had a 765 LT for a week. I used it like – now, look, I, I happened – I met um, – what's his name? I, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, the, 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 the daily driven exotics guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, a, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I I'm blanking on his name. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. But the, the premise of, quote, daily driven exotics is a pretty flawed one. Right. Because the cars are meant to be daily driven. So, yeah, you're rich. Okay, good for you. You drive a Ferrari every day. Good for you. Well, that's the thing. But, like, I've driven a Ferrari every day for a week, a brand, a brand new one. It's fucking easy as shit. Right. There's absolutely no Nothing sacrifice Nothing impresses me about that. this. Yeah. People, rich people just go to the Ferrari dealer and buy a 296 and yeah. think that that's something. That makes it yeah. something. It, they're, you're just rich at that you point. You know, in 1985, you're just not, Leno daily his Countach. That's real. That was his only car. That that's real. And the guys boss. today couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Like Rod Stewart was dailying an F40 for a Rod while. Stewart, like, F40 he's pick. a boss. I just it's um, it's it has been interesting to me, and it is interesting to me how many people therefore think that it's not that great of a car when in reality it is specifically the experience that yeah. I have chosen. Right, right, right. And like you, I want the loud, the smell, the ridiculous stuff. And yes, when I park it, I told us to Ken the other day. When I park it, I'm like I'm good for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I want it. Yeah. I don't again going back to my point earlier, if I want a crazy car, I want a crazy car. Yeah. If I went if my car that you know, when I get the very rare chance when I'm not with my family to drive a supercar and it was a four five eight, which yeah. by the way is a great car. It is a great car. But I would be if it was that and that was my I would feel like this isn't enough. That's why the three twenty eight is so great because it when you drive it. It feels like a fucking old car. Mm-hmm. It steers like an mm-hmm. old car. Mm-hmm. The gear change doesn't always feel the same. Right. You know, sometimes it's stiff and sometimes it's smooth. And I called Donnie and I go, I think my shit's not working. He goes, is it stiff sometimes and smooth sometimes? And I go, yeah. And he goes, it's working. <laughs> and I have that book I just showed you of, of 328 reviews. I go back to this all the time to go, is my car broken or is it designed like this? And I look through the reviews and I read a review from 1987. I go, oh no, he says it right here. It does that. <laughs> um, but it like, it feels it's, old. It is an experience. It's an experience, but it, it does start when I turn the key and want to drive somewhere. And so, and it doesn't overheat in traffic. So like, and that's all Kutash I'm asking for. has been for. that way for me so yeah, yeah. far. The more you drive it, the better it'll behave. The, 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 I, wanted, I wanted specifically an experience. Yeah, yeah, it's that. And I think that the experience and that so I wanted. And so is Ford GT and so is Carrera total. GT. I need experience that I wanted is precisely what some people are running away from. Yeah. Like I, I didn't I didn't know it would be so loud. I didn't know I wouldn't be able to play my phone. I didn't know, yeah. you know, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Are like, you going to put the bluetooth in it? I have You know what I have? I got one of these mic AirPods. Too. I got a uh, <laughs> You drive with AirPods in. It has the original cassette player. Okay. And so I have a cassette a that cassette had a adapter. bluetooth to your yeah, yeah. It doesn't even plug in. It has they now have one it's got a wow. dongle. Okay. Yeah. I got that from my wife for the POW. It's great. Because she's got this amazing, the PAL comes with this Art Deco amazing radio. Right. I don't want to take it right. out. Yep. It looks too great. That's cool. But I got the Bluetooth cassette. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And I'm all so set. Cool. I can play my music. So my my car has the original Alpine CD player from oh. 1987. Oh, imagine how baller you were in 87 to have a CD player in Dude, a car. Dude, I have, I have the original option sheet. It was $9,000 oh, in kidding. 1987. It added 10% almost to the cost of the car. You're kidding. Yeah, it was nine grand. Car, oh. It's a two two option car. The wing was five thousand. The CD player was nine. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. So were the wheels not initially gold? No, they were gold. 
Wasn't that one of the options? It wasn't. A, it didn't charge you for it. It was just like, Man, what color do you want it? That Those are the only two options they charged nine for. Nine grand for a CD. More than the wing. Yeah. <laughs> Double. If you, wow. what is, guess, guess what the first car with an OEM CD player was. Mm. Wasn't it a Countach? Something like that. 87. I thought it, I thought it was Countach. Wikipedia says... Lincoln Town Car. Oh, Boom. really? Lincoln yeah. was there oh, with the I luxury. Didn't, I didn't the first car CD player was invented in 1984 by Pioneer, so it took a couple years to get it worked out. I was always told yeah. that the Countach was the first. I guess I mean, this I is Wikipedia. Correct. It could be well, wrong. No, I mean, I could be wrong. So just, people, I, Plus, I was, I might have been. Uh, who, who knows? Offered. With yeah, your Lincoln. car, well, your car was originally. So US my car. car is my car is a model year 88. So if this was model year eighty seven, but like correct. weird stuff happened on those Lambos. That's the thing. Like the wings, there's no technically yeah, there yeah. were no wing. Like yeah. like who you know. Remember we were talking about rear bumpers and how like improvised they were. Have you seen? There's a a project Countach for sale I right saw. now. Yeah. Have you seen the wonky ass rear yeah. bumpers that are? I on wonder that what thing? that brings. That'll be interesting. Not I, really. A I had comp two for different anything. people contact me and go, "What what is my bidding limit?" On this? <laughs> I, I just by looking at the pictures, I go. If you're going with Donnie, add 200. To, to, <laughs> I think so. To, it's I think probably 200, 200 is probably what I was 200 yeah. will get that car good to go. But you know, guys like us, we'll just wrench on it ourselves. We'll knock it out. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're a car enthusiast. I'm a car enthusiast. You know how to do it. I can maybe do I, it. Maybe I could give Freddie 150. <laughs> he could well, do maybe the rest will go on his YouTube channel and make money from it. Yeah. Now, me and Zach will knock that out over with no a couple problem. of cold ones. For no problem. A, yeah. a, couple of, a couple of long it, weekends. That car needs... We just missed Veterans Day, but... Uh, Christmas. That car yeah. needs a lot. <laughs> a Christmas with your new kid. <laughs> He'll be sleeping right there. But uh, no, yours. Um, you know, I love mine, and and I love. I saw yours in person at Cars and Coffee. It looks great. Condition is excellent. White with black interior is ace. You yeah. don't want that white interior. That white interior is no good. It uh, wears, yeah. Well, it, they bleach the leather, so it cracks. It uh -huh. looks like that's how they get leather white. It's they bleach, <laughs> they bleach it. You know, I once reviewed a 959 with a silver leather oh, interior. Oh, the, um, the, the car I drove in Germany had it. They they used, I think they used some, like, really toxic shit to make it silver. <laughs> no, they did. They they It was like, it's, it's not mercury, but it's like, Something they, they put some fucking nasty shit in that. They didn't know better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they were saying uh, that they that they did this on a few cars. It never made it into like regular 911s. It was 959 right, only. Right. Yeah, it was. And I was like, weird. what's with this like, leather? They're like, oh yeah, we don't silver. <laughs> we don't it's do like that Chernobyl <laughs> package. Don't like, ask. Don't Nobody don't this. have anybody ask for. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of interiors and leather on Porsches, here's an interesting thing. When I worked for Porsche, there was a celebrity who asked for a non-leather interior in a Cayenne. And I remember at the office- Like a vegan or a cloth? Yeah. yeah. And I remember at the office, we laughed and laughed. We thought that was the stupidest thing we'd ever heard of. This mm. person is such an idiot. This was 12 years ago. Yeah. Now, it's like- Standard. Kind of the way it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. That's I'm, like I'm how- I'm pro-cloth. I love, I love a high-end cloth. Clean cloth. I, I like, clean cloth. I like vinyl. Like old school bus seats. Ugh. Big vinyl guy. It gets sticky. Yeah, they crack. It's nice. Then you get the threads inside. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> I'm Stuffing super into out, that, that Volvo wool they're doing. Did it get so hot? My my old my '65 Pontiac had vinyl seats. They were white in the summer. It was like a frying pan. And I mean, God forbid if they were black, it'd be even hotter. Like they were terrible, and you'd stick to it. it yeah, disgusting. but they were cheap. They were cheap. That's Back true. in the day, that was the well, new money. Doug should not be worried about cheap. Dude, cloth seats aren't great. cloth is where it's no. at. Dude. Volvo's, Volvo's, Volvo's have you seen leather. Volvo's wool. The faux leather that Volvo's Toyota uses is, is so amazing. beautiful. It's just all I need in life. No. They do a good job with that now. The faux leather, vegan leather, whatever, whatever plastic you want to call it, like it is nicely done. I suggested to Donnie because Donnie wanted. We redid my door cards because I don't know if you remember this, but they were held on with duct tape, <laughs> and so we had to remake my door cards and we redid the dash to match the door cards. And Donnie was like. I want to redo your seats too, and I was like, "Fucking no!" Right? He's like, "But they're not—they're not original." I go, "I don't give a fuck. Right, they, I don't want them to be original. Then I will care. I want to not right, care." Right. I said, "If I tear them, we can do it. Until then, don't give a fuck." And he goes, "Oh, he's like, fine." And I go, "But hold on a second. Can we do them in cloth? It's because they're black." And I was like, "I drive this car with the top down." I was like, "Can we? Can we make a cloth seat?" And he was like. Over my dead fucking uh, body. <laughs> <laughs> right. An Italian car, you gotta have leather. Yeah. You don't I'd like to do like a Corniche project convertible in cloth. That would be interesting. That was a lot of leather that it you would was. have to convert to cloth. Ton. They were wrapping like the radio. <laughs> they were just, there was a, <laughs> yeah, they everything the radio, was the leather on that car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
The yeah. top boot is like an acre of leather. Yeah. I, I devote about five minutes to month a month of. Uh, it'd be really nice to daily a Corniche. That was that was a bad car. We've just sold the Corniche. Can you pull? Can you pull up? <laughs> you know what we have on the site right now is one of those azures, like the oh, not, yeah. like, not a like mid two thousands. Yeah, like You're, a newer one. Look at that. The red one. The red By 91. The way, those still pull money. Bid just 43 blows. grand. The sedans from that era are worth eight. Yeah, it yeah, blows yeah. me away yeah. that a that a convertible. Look at that. Look at the wow. top. Boot. I mean, honestly. Look at how much leather is on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, wow. Because they couldn't cover. get it to they couldn't get it to come down I'll tell any you further. What, though, that looks fucking great. Who who didn't roll the window down for the photo, <laughs> first off? Who leaves the guy one, whose window is one broken quarter yes, window up? Correct, because the other window it was down. But also, red is amazing on this car. As good as it was on any any SL Mercedes. Deep Florida. Of course, he's got a yacht club. Oh, he's plane. got the yacht club flag. Is that the official <laughs> Mar-a-Lago flag? I think, I think that's a Mar-a-Lago flag. But, um, Seems about right. That car, that is a Troop Beverly Hills spec yeah. Uh, Corniche. Yeah. I was driving the Countach on the freeway like three months ago, two months ago when I first got it, and I came up on a Corniche, and I was like, this is deep 80s yeah. stuff. Yeah. And the dude looked like he was the original owner of this that's thing. Just old play, old California Magnus play. has the Corniche coupe. Really? Yeah, he's got a Cornish coupe. Why? That shit is fire. Why does he have? Because it looks a awesome. What a it's crazy. even more valuable than this the car. Portable. You drive around and it, you still feel like you could buy the family of the people who are looking at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Hawtonian. <laughs> yeah, you can, It's an I came over on the fucking Mayflower <laughs> car. Yeah. <laughs> Or you were a first gen immigrant and you struck it big and you wanted to have that. It's like like, uh, well, like the or... Chippendales guy. It's yeah. like the it's like fully like that. Uh, the Cornish Coupe is where it's at though. They're not good cars, but goddamn, do they look cool? They look cool. Are the Bentley ones better? The two thousands ones? Uh, the one we have on the site is like the very last gen. Uh -huh. Those were a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, of course, is as good as the Bentley Dominator. Have we discussed this before? I've never even heard of that. What the fuck is a Bentley Dominator? Pull up the Bentley Dominator. Matt doesn't know anything about the I don't real know. cars. I, I don't. <laughs> the bet. I'm learning today. This is Matt goes to car school day. Okay, you remember what the Italian design Bentley? Columbus? Well, here's the Bentley oh, Dominator. Oh, this is like a Sultan of Brunei SUV thing, right? Yeah, and does it look like a P38 Range Rover that's been wrapped as a Bentley? <laughs> well, that's <Yeah>. because. <laughs> Yeah. Look at how beautiful this is. Now, of all the cars that Whoa. I that New Money Doug wanted, this was number one. Couldn't get in touch <laughs> with the was, Sultan, this unfortunately. Looks, this looks like if someone asked Bentley to build a hearse SUV. <laughs> Look, uh, various people have said it's ugly, and then other people have said it's very ugly. But I'm I personally it's tragic. It's tragic. Is there a model? What is that? Pull that up. This you, there is. Art yeah, toys. there's art toys. You I want that one. immediately. Personal. Sultan the model looks even worse somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so it does look worse. Yeah, it's it's heinous. It's really really bad. The picture it's bad in every color. That Red picture. Is really bad. That picture. Yeah, is from when Bentley had the Sultan send them back to Bentley when they were designing the Bentayga. They wanted to be like, okay, what did we do the first time? What did we do wrong the first time? <laughs> Anything on this car, check it off the list to never do again. This is, I it's wanted this. This really... was my grand dream. Imagine driving around. Now, there is a yellow on red one, yes. Yeah. That, that's not the Yellow with red interior. Whoa. It's really I, this, bad. You know what? This would be fun for about four days. Four days? Are you, you kidding? You would get so tired of explaining to people that this is, in fact, a real Bentley. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, this is not, like, Honestly, it would be exhausting. Honestly, if I had this car, I wouldn't talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would talk to you. That's right. I mean, look at this asshole built a fake Bentley. This guy thinks this fucking thing, he thinks he's driving a Bentley. This is, fucking it guy. does look like the kind of thing that somebody would, they can't afford a Bentayga, yeah. like, like a bad Countach replica. Right, That's what yeah, like. exactly. When I went to England, um, have you, do you know that Ratarossa guy? Mm -hmm. So I went to England, I drove the Ratarossa around. Now the Ratarossa is perfect because it's a real Testarossa that looks fake. And so that is fun. And people can't believe that it's real. Right. And at first they kind of like side eye you like you're driving some shit box and then they kind of like Look at it, and they go. Wait a minute. This is this is real, but it's a, it is. But it's a, it's not like like this is real in a different way. This is real. Like Much you have worse. to you have to actually convince somebody <laughs> that the factory built this. Yeah, you do. But look at it. Look how cool that would be. It looks like a bad London taxi. It yeah. does look like a London taxi. It looks like way. they took the roof of a London taxi. 
and, and put it on a Land Cruiser. Put it on a, this just like proves that, yeah. that the Sultan of Brunei had such little, so little taste. They were able to look up the Bentley Java. Have you seen all of his? his I've seen a lot of one-off. his shit. I don't I mean, know about so, the Java. Some of these things were just like the most heinous thing that anybody yeah. could think of, and they figured this this tasteless guy. The that's, Bentley, oh, that's the wagon. The Bentley Java was the, the Bentley wagon. Java Bentley Java looks like a Volvo C70 <laughs> with a Bentley grill on it. Look the at wa- that. The wagon is pretty nice. That's like they a cool did car. when they did the uh, Continental wagon, whatever that was. They turned a Continental yeah. into a wagon. That one looked pretty cool. That looks just like an X type, though. To be <laughs> the X type wagon, that looks just like it. <laughs> they might have actually done it on the, an X type. The Sultan, though, they were thinking. They must have been thinking. This guy is so tasteless. He, but but this. But wasn't he couldn't he like, possibly want but he this. Like they were able to sell concept cars. Of they were designing the car, and he's like, I love it. Like great. They he he must have cost. been keeping these companies. The story afloat, I heard though. was that he bought a quarter of all new rolls in Bentley in ninety eight ninety nine. <laughs> a quarter of all. And if you ever see those published lists of the Sultan cars, there's yeah. like PDFs. It's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Rolls Royces. That is a hoarder, for which. <laughs> Nobody is able to contain that person. You know, Michael Sheehan, you know him? He, yeah. He the got, actor? No, no, no. Michael Sheehan runs uh, this Ferrari store for, for, used for our dealership. I'm thinking of Michael Shannon. In um, Orange County. Uh-huh. He, they, he got down there. The Sultan, like, brought him down to, like, hey, maybe it's time. This was 10 years ago. Maybe yeah. it's time to get rid of some of these cars. And I was like, I think to myself, like, oh, man. All I want to do I is bet it's insane. participate in yeah. that. Look, look at the, the list of Sultan's cars. Look at oh, it. Wow. Alphabetically. There's a lot of a lot of AMGs. Wow, <laughs> and that oh, was and that Vin, was, there's VIN numbers. That on was these in things. yeah, wow. yeah. And Holy plate. shit! You've been scrolling for fucking thirty <laughs> seconds. It's still <laughs> AMGs. Look Dude, how much is left on the page. Okay, Garage, that's Aston. Lagondas. Wait, what are the Audis? Audi a, A8s, Audi Avants, lots of A8s. I wonder if that's an RS2 Audi Avant. I like how it says Audi A3 None. What do you think that <laughs> no, is? That's the plate. The plate is oh, the next Oh, never thing. registered. Never yeah, registered. Yeah, yeah. Didn't bother with that one. Well, th- oh, by the way, why did they put wait, plates wait, on Wait, wait, hang on. Bentley. What is a Bentley Camelot? Look that up. Look that up. Oh, so you're going to get into some weird stuff right now. <laughs> I need to know what a Bentley Camelot is. <laughs> C-A-M-E-L-O-T. The Bentley Cam a lot is what Duck Dynasty what guys are buying. What is that thing in the center? Is that it? Wow, is that it? That sedan thing? Oh, the Bentley Cam a lot. I don't know. That just looks like a this looks Continental. Like a, uh, yeah, like oh, hang on. It's, uh, it's the same model the same as, as the Continental, Continental. Super short, but it's four inches shorter. Uh, Whoa, shorter, short yeah. wheel base race car. Production is three. Uh, what? Five, fitted with a, a twin tower sports style seats, all chrome, made matte black. The model has the letter H in the fifth position. The chassis number indicates non-standard model for selected customers, especially Brunei. The yeah. dude had his own VIN. That's crazy. Okay, wait. Go back to the list. That's fucking nuts. What else? But like see? Bentley Val d'Isère. What yeah. the hell is that? Val d'Isère. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. There's, this goes on and on and on. Yeah, what is a Val d'Isère? Bentley Sports. What is a Bentley Monte Carlo? <laughs> I don't fucking any of these stuff is. <laughs> He just, they named I've them seen, for him. The ones they made I've them seen are like a lot him. of the, a lot of the Ferraris and stuff, the the wagons. Yeah. You know, I've seen that stuff. Those, though, they didn't only make for him. The Val The Val is, there you go. It was a wagon. Uh, oh, it that's was a it. Wagon that's a wagon. What yeah. in the Volvo? Uh, <laughs> that, I mean, well, the profile actually looks yeah, more like Mercedes this is a, wagon. This is this a Bentley is Continental bad. R wagon. All it's wheel a turbo drive, R wagon. All-wheel drive turbo R. Yeah, yeah. That is a shooting fucking break, my friend. That rules. The one, uh, this yellow one is not good, but I've seen one of these in blue that looked pretty nice, yeah. actually. Yeah, okay, so that's the Val de Isere. I think the Monte Carlo was an attractive car. But yeah. if you keep scrolling, look at all these things. There's Continental a- R. Why did he buy so many Continental R's? So many. Why so many Azures? What is the Phoenix? What the what hell is, is that? What is the Bentley Phoenix? <laughs> yeah, now that I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, these weren't names. Yeah, yeah. They just named them for him. <laughs> oh, it turns oh, yeah. out. Uh, Brunei. Uh, yeah, Brunei, yeah. The Bentley F- Bentley of Phoenix is, is a little different. Uh, what is that one that keeps coming up? It looks like a sedan? curvy sedan. Is oh, the one in the upper right is my favorite of all of his Bentley. Oh, the actually, Buccaneer. The Buccaneer. Buccaneer. That's what it was called. Yeah, the Buccaneer. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah, what is that what? sedan? That one in the very upper right on the flatbed. I love that's, that. Yeah, thing. that's the Buccaneer. The Actually, Bentley I think Buccaneer. that one is that one is the is the Cruella most Cruella Deville thing. You yeah. show up at that, that's and cool. people are. That's the real Art Deco. You drive that around, Bentley. and yeah, 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 you're about to fire some people's dads. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That is a Volvo C70. That, that is yeah, literally the, the a Volvo Java C70. Looks like a Volvo C70. It's not great. That's not great. The thing either, is, the Sultan was going to oh, strike the out some of these. Yeah. Cars. That's the Bentley Phoenix. The Bentley Phoenix is an Azure. With Rounded a Jaguar S type grill on it. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, it's not good. Now, that would have been cool to be so rich. 
You could have yeah, just commissioned sure. stuff. Well, we're getting back there. Yeah. Right. I mean, we got we've got those rolls, boat tails. Yeah. And, and, and Porsche's got this special thing where well, you can Ferrari has a stuff. thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. Really, Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. I actually. I mean, I kind of. I mean, it's bad for the world that people are that rich, but right. like, I kind of like that it's possible again. It yeah. wasn't possible for a while. I think it's cool as hell to be able to do that. Yeah. I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather that than them like buying governments or whatever. But, right. But they're but doing both, though. They're doing That's both. the problem. That's where you get into the too rich territory. Right. When you can commission the Bentley Buccaneer and buy a government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really should have to do an either or. Right. Situation. Right. Right. Like, listen, we'll build you this, but no lobbying for three election cycles. <laughs> Uh, what's happening at Cars and Bids? Anything? I mean, you guys I'll obviously, tell you what's it's like at... big, it's, you know, it's big time Doug over there now. Have you been paying attention to the car market? Your update video yeah, is great. Yeah. We should discuss it. Things have slowed a <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. The site's still doing well. We're still selling basically the same number of cars or more, but the values are down. Mm -hmm. And some people are willing to accept that, and then some people are not. Yeah. Um, but it's just the truth. We sold a Model 3. I was telling him last time he was down. We sold a Model 3 Performance for 25. Really? That I'm not a Model 3 guy. But for 25, that's all right. It's like, hmm. Panameras are 20 grand. Really? Used first early Panameras are twenty thousand dollar cars. We sold a, a, a 06 Quattro Porte for eight. No. <laughs> but it's an F1 gearbox, yeah, isn't it? But yeah. eight. But yeah. you don't even need to use that as a car. That's at true. eight, you could start thinking about other at, stuff. Yeah, at eight, you're putting the motor in other shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At eight, I'm dropping the motor into a Fox body and we're right. calling it a day. <laughs> that would be cool as hell. <laughs> be I mean, that's parts car. But obviously, yeah, yeah, those yeah, are yeah. cheap. But like the fact that Model 3s are 25, that model, that, that Lucid Air was, is 65, yeah. the market has changed. Yeah. No more flips. I don't think there's a single car right now that you could flip and make money on. Short of like, short of like a 911 ST, something, something like that, yeah, yeah, crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. But like people were flipping Siennas, yeah. like that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rivian yeah. flips are done, yeah, completely done. Lightning flips are done, yeah. Lucid, all I that was, stuff. I was told by my by my dealer. I got you know I get emails and whatever, and it was like I could I could order a Lightning and get it in four weeks. I could buy yep. I could get a new because I called uh, you know I called about uh, uh, about. The stuff I had talked about six months ago, and I was like, "Hey, if I wanted," they're like, "Yeah, just you can just you don't need to do anything." I drove by a dealer anymore. on the way here. I just had a Bronco Raptor sitting on the floor, and I uh, bet they're asking, but they're not going. I drove it. by a dealer the other day that had two dozen Broncos on yeah. the lot, yeah. just sitting all over the, the place. days. Things have changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a PSA to sellers. It's still a, a fight to try to get them to. You know, they're still looking at comps from from six months ago and saying, "Why can't I get this?" And it actually is interesting because we went the opposite direction in twenty and twenty one. Right? Yeah, um, you could. There was no reserve you could put on some of these cars and have it not sell. Yeah. You know, it, comps from six months ago were totally irrelevant in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. That we would we would try to fight people on their comps. And then the car would sell for ten grand more than the reserve we put on it. We were like, "What are we doing?" And well, now it's the exact opposite. You look at a car six months ago. Eh, this sold for that. This one that came in is better. It's good. We'll put a higher number, or the same number on it. No, those those things have slowed very, very quickly. Do you think it's just interest rates? Yeah, or interest do you rates. Think... There's some general fear in the economy. I think. Yeah. Um, production is caught up for new cars. Yeah, which for new cars for sure. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that that's and, yeah, a lot of these people who are flipping these. Rivians and stuff were probably some of the people who are most anxious about layoffs, don't you think? Yeah. A lot of tech people, a lot of like certain job market people sure. who are like, oh, we got a Rivian and make some, you know, uh, maybe it's not, you know. Yeah. Your, your 30 year lawyer is probably not the guy who's, you know, doing that. Yeah. But um, yeah, things have changed, definitely. I we're think, back to more reality, I think. Yeah, but is there stuff that, that, that became valuable that is not? It is not drop down at all. Really I mean, high end. Yeah, yeah. The F forties, the Carrera GTs. Sure. So far, I have a suspicion they will drop, but so far they have. Those people don't need to be selling. They're, those they're... people probably don't need to be selling. Limited mm -hmm. demand, et cetera. They're not making more, et cetera. So there are reasons yeah. why maybe those stay up there. Yeah. Um, but the days of like F forties at a million are gone. Period. I think. Sure. Um, F forties are two million now. At least you yeah. find me one for two million. We'll yeah, talk. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty you wild. You can't fit in an F forty, can you? It's tight. You tried. It's tight. Honestly, I'm Kurgi T and Countach is better than F forty. I would rather have those two than that one. Yeah. For so many reasons. Sure. Um, but so that stuff hasn't really come down yet. You know what's still going up as Countaches? There's so few of them. I mean, there's so there's 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 so fucking rare. 
Yeah. Um, and a couple and other vintage Lambos. Mercies and Diablos are, are really doing well. Yeah. Really well. Yeah. Well, they were. I think they were undervalued. They were all undervalued. Especially the uh, Diablos. It's, uh, it was insane how undervalued they I know, were. One fifty. One twenty. Because they're really rare. Yeah. Oh. They're I mean, really rare. Yeah. They're three thousand Diablos total. Yeah. Um, it, it, that was surprising. Well. Everything has changed except old Lambos. Boom. Yeah. You want to get some deals? They're out there now. The problem yeah. is you'll have to finance it. Eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, But that is – it is definitely like – it has been surprising to us just how quickly. We knew it was coming, but it's been surprising to us just how quickly it has come. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times I want to just like shake the sellers and be like – people are like, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait till the interest rates change and the market comes back up. I'm like, dude, like they got, they got like an F80 M3. I'm like, dude, I mean, that's cool. Wait, this is it. That's cool that you're paying 2500 bucks a year to insure that thing. Right. And, right. You know, so. And it's just not going to occur. I mean, maybe some of these cars will come back up, but like stuff that's 2017, 2018, those yeah. are finally starting to get down to where they belong in my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. 991s, 992s, those were crazy for so long. Yeah. Even regular ones, PDK, normal cars. Yeah, those cars should finished. not have been over MSRP or anywhere near Especially it. Especially a GTS PDK. I mean, yeah. that's like a cool car, but come on. Yeah. Well, it's funny, we're just seeing it, it's, on the way up it was... Zero percent interest, supply constrained. Right. So it was the perfect force to push right. prices up to the moon. And, and now it's opposite. literally the opposite. Yeah. But they're going, "What's going on?" Yeah. yeah. I think people are. S- Man, it, you know, you just got me thinking about Panameras. <laughs> like, oh up, shit! Pull up I Panameras. Be, it is astonishing really? what, what used Panameras go for. And you and know they, what? And they work properly. They work most properly. Of the time. They're great. I was just in Northern California for a wedding, and then I did like a long weekend trip with my wife, and we rented a Panamera hybrid. And it was great, right? Excellent. Not even a yeah, turbo hybrid. No, a regular no, hybrid. Reg- an yeah. S hybrid. And it was just excellent. Look Let's at these numbers. First off, 83 for that turbo wow, sport turismo. Wow, 2018 turbo sport turismo. That is a grand. lot of car for that, that money. That thing was probably 200 grand yeah. when it was new. Five years ago. Yeah. But okay, good, so, but look at this. The 2010 4S sells for 16.5. 2013 GTS for 30 Gs. And that's a big wow. V8 car. That's, that's a big a, NAV8 that's a car. That's a NAV8 yeah. car. car, yeah. Great car. 18 turbo for 70. These things are. 16. Panamera 4S for twenty three thousand bucks. <laughs> that, that's fucking. It is great. astonishing to me. These are following the depreciation curve of big sedans, which yeah. I guess makes sense. But like, but they're more reliable than more other reliable, big sedans. faster, better. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yes, the early ones were handed. That fifteen GTS for fifty four is the like, red. Oh, that red yeah, one. Yeah, that's like yeah. damn. I am interested. That's excellent. 14 turbo for 46. That's Ooh. probably the sweet spot. Is like fourteen to sixteen. Yeah, you're not yeah, too yeah. old. Tech's probably pretty good. Yeah. And they're powerful, fast cars. Yeah. Wow. That's superb. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little watch little watch number on those Panameras. They're gonna be out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Huh. The hybrid sport Turismo for. I mean, 63? that's from. That, but that's February of 23. So it's probably that's che- it'd be cheaper yeah. now. Keep in mind though, that's a base car. That's just a Panamera four, but it's still 462 horsepower. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll go down that road. Yeah. I Wait. think these things are bargains. And also Cayenne. So the second gen Cayenne came out in 11, mm-hmm. and those are starting to get cheap, 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 Except cheap. Except for the diesels, because everybody wants those. The diesels the, are more expensive, for, for sure. Bills. Yes, that yeah. is true. But like that 14 GTS for 15.5. How about like first gen Cayenne turbos being like collectible now? Yeah, that's, I know. That's Look funny. at that. That 04S, that's a first gen S. It's 04S. 22 grand. Well, and it's pretty low miles. It's actually. a low mile car, et cetera, et cetera. But like. Twenty. That dude paid more than the guy who bought the G, the fourteen GTS. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow, dude, these Cayennes are fucking dirty cheap. They are dirty, cheap, cheap, dirty cheap. cheap. People yeah. only think about the Porsche sports cars, but it's like you know, twenty fourteen GTS, fifteen thousand bucks. That twelve turbo for twenty four. I mean, that's, that's a that's a five hundred horsepower SUV. <laughs> like that's a family car that five hundred yeah. horsepower. And by the way, it's Camry money. And like you say, they're pretty reliable. Oh four Cayenne Turbo Tech Art Magnum <laughs> wide body, <laughs> so seventy three hundred bucks. Yeah, buddy, that's excellent. <laughs> I remember that body kit. Look at that thing. Oh, look man. at the front bumper, deep. <laughs> Deep nine nine six vibes in that front bumper. Just that mouth giant opening so weird. It's a circle. T- yeah, circle it's not great. Oh wow. Circle. Yeah, but too many shapes. Just like those uh, Koenig body yeah, kits, yeah, yeah. these will someday. This will be yeah. looked back on as like the a symbol of pre recession excess. Dude, fucking Tamarian is all about the Koenigs now. No he's, surprise. He's scooping them all up. Oh, and look I at think, that floor mat. Oh wow, Yellow and that's got eyes. the that's got the com- the wrinkle leather, the comfort <laughs> leather. For like a couple years, Porsche and Mercedes had an optional like extra plush leather yeah. that was just like pre quilted and wrinkled, right. and it looks like garbage after about two thousand miles. Mm. Yeah. 
That is, there's a lot going on. Here. That's, that's, yeah, that, now I see. What was that? Now I see seventy three hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good deal. That's pretty funny though. It All is right, wild well, I, though. I, I might I, have to put a Panamera on my uh, on my shop. It is. List. It's it's fun as someone as an enthusiast, not as the owner of this business, but as an enthusiast, it is fun to start seeing cars come down to levels where it's like, oh, yeah. like. That might be something to kind of roll the dice on, just yeah. or recommend to someone or whatever. Yeah. If I could get a 2012 Cayenne S Hybrid for 10, <laughs> yeah. it's like, well. That's not bad. Here's yeah. an interesting fact for you. I rented this Panamera Hybrid S. Mm-hmm. The Cayenne S Hybrid and the Panamera S Hybrid from that era, the, the gas engine was the same supercharged V6 as the B8 Audi S4. Right. The, I told you this on our thing. The, the, then there was a hybrid component. It didn't have a, the, the hybrid version didn't have a dipstick. The Audis do. Okay. But the Porsches don't. They cap it off with a piece of plastic. And so Any particular you, reason for this? Well, because it's measured electronically in the cluster. Okay. So you have to measure it electronically. Or you can just you go to an S4. Cap off. Take the cap off. Go to an S4, stick it in, and you can measure your own oil. <laughs> and so the, for me, when I, when I had this rental car, the, the electronic thing was malfunctioning. And so it always said it was way, way underfilled. So I kept putting more oil, and then, then I started getting the way overfilled <laughs> oh, message. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just good. <laughs> my, uh, my spider... Um, I don't change my own oil because it's actually you, – you pretty much can't in this car. Like you have to take off all the under trays. I mean without a full-size lift, like you're not – This changing. is true even just an OE one or because yours is mine? No, no. Right, even if it's a regular spider. Um, in fact, probably even if it's a regular Boxster. Forget that it's a fucking spider. Yeah. Um, it's a whole fucking to-do. Yeah. And then there is no dipstick. It's electronic. Yeah. And so I, 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 I was at BBI Autosport when they were doing my oil change. The process of getting the oil level right is so fucking annoying. Oh, because they have to go into the screen. Yes, and then they have to run the car and turn it off and let it do, and then oh. wait, and then do, and then and then, and they're like, they're like, when people bring us these cars for an oil change, we tell them they have to leave the car overnight, <laughs> not because they do, but because they don't want the customer sitting in the lobby tapping their foot, knowing it's going to be whole, an that hour. That is so funny. It's like yeah. that with Career GT also, and I've I've wondered. That's so. It's like legit, like a three hour thing. How stupid. And then, by the way, even though they go, they have this you know this piece of equipment that's not particularly advanced that measures exactly how much oil came out of the car in the change. Right. Exactly. And they go, we measured exactly how much came out. We put exactly that much back in. And yet, <clears throat> and yet we're going to send you home with a court <laughs> because tomorrow when you start the car up, it may still say it's a little You're low kidding. and you have to add some more. How yeah, stupid. it's a whole it's a whole. To Why not do. just make it easy? What did they deal with this? I'm stuff? sure there's a reason that, it, that Porsche did it like this, or maybe there isn't. But I'm it's... not one of these guys who bangs on the drum of like, oh, manual transmissions make, you know, old school, everything's better. But like, that's kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. A dipstick is good. A dipstick's a dipstick is easy. This, that was not something that needed improvement. Moving, right. You know, sort of like a, a button. Right. Like, I get when they went from key to button. I really do get that. But going from button to, like, haptic, no feedback, touchscreen button, like, that wasn't. Ooh, because race cars have had start buttons for a long time. But I, yeah. I wonder and doubt that race cars now have capacitive <laughs> haptic buttons. Yeah. So they should just keep it with the Back button. Back in the day, me and Larry Casilla, when we had our Mustangs, we put start buttons in our Mustangs. Really? Yeah. Because it was cool? Because it was awesome. Mm-hmm. So we, you'd get in the car. We both did exactly the same. You would turn the key to uh, the power. Right? And oh, by the way, the, the key start still worked. It's not like we disabled that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So we added steps. You turn, the key, you turn the key to that, and then the button, we put the button panel on the ceiling. To so, make it really so obvious. So you hit the that's button. That's cool. You'd hit, you'd hit two toggles, like big ass aircraft toggles. Ching, ching, what what, what did the toggles you, what did do? They do? Uh, I don't know if they did anything. <laughs> okay. I mean, because I if think, you could still start with a key, did you have to turn the toggles before you turn the key? I may. Maybe I don't remember <laughs> exactly. You're insane. So no, I, no, I, I do remember. I do remember. Fuel the pump. The first, the first one toggle was fuel pump. Okay. The first toggle activated the panel itself that the button was on. <laughs> oh, it like connected. So you had to the activate that panel. So you didn't have to actually toggle when you started at the key because you didn't even need to use the panel. I think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. And high school. It was it yeah. was motorsport theater 100. percent But this was 1996. And Larry. And Larry and me. Yeah, me and Larry did it. Dude, the, was, the, the kid, I was in like a hot rod crew, uh, crew in high school, and the kid with the fastest car, he had a primered roadrunner, mm. and he worked in an engine shop, so he had the fastest. No, he worked at Sunoco so he could get race gas at a discount. <laughs> but he installed a center, like a console panel that had 
toggle, 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 start, a yeah. big red start button, and it and it worked, and it looked tough as shit. We were Remember, like, this is amazing. I don't know. Were you with me when we went out to do the uh, Baja buggies, the buckshot racing buggies no. out of Glamis? We went out to film these buckshot, like, 2,000 horsepower sand rails that would do, you know, wheelies at 150. Yeah. And the guy was so worried about his friends getting drunk in the middle of the night and stealing his buggy that it had a ten a combo a combination <laughs> keypad start. So you had to dial in a ten this digit pin code. This was just in code. general. He was worried about this. Yes. Like it wasn't. He wasn't worried about it that day. He had made the vehicle that way. He because built the vehicle that way because when he, he goes was out very with nervous his about this specific thing. Because apparently, when you're in the desert, just drunk driving is just a thing. Oh, there's yeah. no ro- there's no roads. Well, you go out there and there's all those people camping. Yeah, and and they just, just yeah, get yeah. wasted and and, yeah. and it's what they do. Like uh, yeah. I I don't think it's a good idea, but it's what they do. And he was and he said people were fucking stealing my rig, <laughs> wasted stealing my rig. So now there's a keypad combination. Genius. Love do it. Do you know what automobile was like that? Well, my Fords had the door keypad, but the keypad start. I've never seen a keypad start. GM EV1. Oh. Why did they do it that way? Just for Who whimsy? The yeah, they were insane. They had no. They were like, "How can we make this different?" I mean, it has a keypad start. I know this because I have an owner's manual, for one. I mean, that's like it's there not. It is. It's not terrible. Like to do that instead of a key is actually not bad. No, it, it, I agree with you. It's actually a pretty good oh, there's, idea. There's the keypad. You Go to the, right there. Down, one down. One down. Middle. Middle there. Yeah, that's the keypad. Yeah, and it's the double numbers, just like Ford did it. Yep. Yeah. There's my owner's manual. <laughs> Is that a gift from somebody, or did you? I don't know where I got it. I think I found it on eBay late at night, like yeah. five years ago or ten years ago. <laughs> you ever now, drive one, an EV one? Did you? No. I no, I would love to. I've only ever seen like two. GM sent them to these yeah, they're in, like, and, and yeah, universities. universities and stuff. Yeah, I've and seen, they, but they the made Peterson them pick out one the, for a while. It's so annoying. How cool would it be to just cruise around on an EV one? That would it, be the ultimate. Yeah, it would be the ultimate daily. You'd probably have to take out the entire powertrain and put in, you know, something. What's well, like? What's the Volkswagen modern. one that, that came out ten years oh, the later? the EL but... e, XL, XL one. Yeah. XL one. Can you yeah. drive those around, or is that they only Not, need one? No, no. They 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 sold like a couple hundred of them. Yeah. Uh, when I went to um, Alpina. Andreas Bovensiepen, the CEO of Alpina, had two in his collection. I drove one in, in Nashville. There's oh, me. there's your video. Mm. Yeah. Did, yeah, that, did that, it that's drive at nice? Motor Museum. No. Oh, okay. It, but it's cool as hell. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of cool things about it, including it has mirror cameras like a McLaren yeah. Speedtail. Yeah. Ooh, they sold, let's see, 2019. Very efficient. One was sold. Yeah, they bring money. They were uh, real money yeah, then. Yeah. They were like 150 yeah. grand new, and that was like 15 well, years ago. Well, and there's probably enough Volkswagen enthusiasts out there to justify having right. the ultimate Volkswagen. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, these are cool. I think in my video I called it the world's only like hypermile supercar, which is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like, kind it, of. It like yeah. is a supercar. It like has supercar doors and the two. You know, it's yeah. Like, is, it a, it's, is it a carbon monocoque too? I think so. I don't remember. But like it had all the supercar accoutrement yeah. that you would want. Have it's you cool. been getting the emails about Aptera? Oh, God. Yeah, I think I am on some sort of Aptera. I keep, they, I keep getting the updates. I'm ready. When, they, when they're ready, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should go to the Patreon because we've got a lot. Oh. Of course, if you want to talk to us on the show. Oh, I love this. is my favorite part. I, to, I forgot uh, about it. Yeah, if you want to uh, get the live stream, you want to do all that good shit. What do you just copy and paste these into a doc here and then we go mm-hmm. through them? Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then I clip out some that are just whatever. But yes. Oh, yeah. like some some people say some nasty stuff. No, no, no. No, it's just these yeah. redundant questions and boring questions. Do people and... say nasty stuff? No, because they're Patreon. No, because they're yeah. paying. If you want to pay us to say nasty shit, by the way, <laughs> fucking, you can literally, you can pay me five bucks a month to talk shit. That's fine. <laughs> We won't block you or anything. We'll let you. We'll read your shit on the I air. I guess that makes sense. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'll do that. Maybe I'll go start for it. it. Maybe whenever Johnny Lieberman is Evil on, Doug. I'll be like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Kellen says, what's the quirkiest quirk you've seen on a car that you've reviewed? Oh. I mean, there's got to be endless. It's so hard to pick one. The I always, whenever anybody asks me this, I always go back to the Vector W8 having aircraft screens. Yeah. The, and three across seating. And an Oldsmobile Toronado gearbox. One of the W8s trains. did have three across steering, but the one I drove didn't. Oh, okay. they were they were all hobnob built yeah, in a garage. All, yeah. Oh, by the way, you calling the Cybertruck arts and crafts shit? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's like it's like bad origami. So bad. And I I have decided that I'm not. If you like it, fine. That's okay. Oh, you're going to let people like it. I'm going to let people like it. I'm going to let people like it, but I will not forgive it being built like arts and crafts shit. I don't care if someone likes the style of something that I don't like. Okay. Do you think that 
I think it's By the way, the other answer to this is the Aston Martin Laganda has the odometer under the hood. But I can, oh, yeah, if I really funny. thought through this, I could think of some better ones. Do you think that the Cybertruck, this is my contention about the Cybertruck, test, no Tesla owner has ever driven a full-size pickup truck, ever. <laughs> like, there's not a single guy in a Model 3 who's yeah. ever been, an, been in an F-150. <laughs> yeah. When they get in the Cybertruck, they're going to be like, this is so big. They're going to yeah. be bumping into stuff all over the place. Sure. It's going to be a real, like... Issue. It also has like no rear visibility. No rear visibility. <laughs> yeah. Massive, and you know that the visit, it, like generally the angles are going to be weird because of the design. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the A pill? How big the A pillar is? And there's a windshield wiper there. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. The front, the front is very small. I yeah. saw a video yesterday and was yeah. shocked. Interesting. Yeah. It's it was a, it was to a really, really bad yeah. idea. That right. a bunch of people who didn't want to complete the bad idea are, are they're gonna think, Yeah, this is so cool, I gotta get one. They're gonna get out of their model threes or buy one in addition, and they live in like Thousand Oaks. Yeah. <laughs> and they got they have no clue. <laughs> they have no clue what it's like to drive a full size truck. Yeah. Which is I you get in a suburban or a Tahoe. I rented a like an escalade a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's That's enormous. A big thing. Yeah, I just I just drove I've I have driven lots of full size trucks. I got an Escalade V press car like last month to go on a trip to Palm Springs, a place with tons of fucking yeah, space. And a lot of vehicles. And like this it. thing was jai fucking enormous. Absolutely enormous. Plus you drive around in that, you know. You yeah. know. <laughs> I had a guy I rented one. This is so bad. I rented one in Sacramento, I was there for a wedding. And uh I'm driving along, and I'm like in heavy traffic, and coming toward me is also heavy traffic, and there's another brand new Escalade, mm -hmm. and the dude waves at me, and I'm like, uh-uh. There's an Escalade <laughs> wave? Ew. I'm not doing this. I'm Ew. not part of this. <laughs> the Escalade V was very, was really dumb, because you go from a vehicle that's already very fast and powerful, given its size, right. yeah. to being marginally <laughs> faster and more, uh, you know. It's like the G65 AMG, the yeah, V12. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a little quicker. Like, how often are people flooring their Escalades? And, like, period. Like, that just, it's, it's... The problem, you don't understand Texas. It doesn't matter. They're yeah. going to be able to show up. I got the V. Yeah, yeah. If they had totally. a V, V, people in Texas would buy that. Yeah. The problem is I do understand that. <laughs> but right. it's so, it's so dumb. Right. It Dude, is the so Cybertruck is feet longer than a new Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> how many? Uh, what's the length? What's the inches length? Well, this is from Insider Engineering. They say it's going to be 18.6 feet, and a Chevy Tahoe I calculated is like 17 and a half. Ooh. Wow. So 18.6 is 120. They said this has 256 200. inches, oh, but that's, that's also huge. off. That is huge. <laughs> it's huge. These people have Model 3s. <laughs> that's huge. They are, they do not realize yeah. what they're and about to get into. wait till you see what happens to a that's human body when that front corner fucking tears them apart like a fruit peeler. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a part of this world. Yeah, it's not. My neighbors keep asking me. My neighbor, I live in like a normal neighborhood. They all got Model Ys. What do you think? Should I get a Cybertruck? I'm thinking to myself, you are an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks tough. Don't go anywhere near this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. You can make a whole living suing people that are driving these fucking things. Yeah. Uh, Flannel Bob says, what's the nicest car for the lowest price that you've sold on cars and bids and then the inverse? Uh, God, that's you just a great got a, question. You just got 11 grand for an Oldsmobile silhouette. Did you see the neon that we sold? Peterson was sold a Peterson? neon with us. What did it get? Six miles, yeah, 2,000. What? Take a guess. It wasn't like an SRT. It was a regular ass automatic neon. It was neon. a trash. Don't look. He's got up. It was okay. a I'm not, trash. I won't see it. I, neon, I, probably a three speed auto. Did it go for $18,000? 10,600 US dollars. You know, actually, I don't bad. know. There's no comps. I don't know. Like, at the <laughs> end of the no day, comps. what do you even do with it? But, I the, mean, the, that was the Peterson thing. Your, your, problem. Your 16 year old drives <laughs> is there any to school. Re, is it, was it the first neon? No, it's just it's a just neon. It's just a neon? Why That's did why they have it. Peterson, I've learned and didn't know, but Peterson gets cars like donated to them for yeah, one yeah, reason tax or another. Deductions and and shit, at some yeah. point, some, they, a lot of times they're just like, the fuck do I do with this thing? <laughs> I mean, look. You can't for, put that in a museum. For, part of our pizza delivery collection. If you want to buy a car for your kid for 10,000 bucks. You yeah, know, at least I it's guess. like new. It's going to need a lot of work, probably. I don't it, know. Prob it probably needs a five thousand dollars service. What, what trans is this? A three? It's speed an auto. auto. Yeah, it's an auto. Three speed auto. Oh, yeah. Boom! Yeah. In two thousand, Chrysler was still doing a three speed auto. Yeah. Wow, high <laughs> <Good laughs> <drag> quality. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the question was, what is the car that was sold? That we got them. I the, mean, the Panameras are great examples of cars that like are the cheapest for the most car yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most expensive for the least car. There's got to be some great ones. I mean, there's and I have in. no qualms about saying. I just can't think of any right now. Um, G wagon. Is there some some collector grade version of 
you know, a ter- is there, you know, pull up, go to, go to the site real quick. Is there a way to, is there a way to sort? Yeah, there's by a great weird? sort. Click on, click on uh, results go under auctions there. Click on past results. Uh huh. Okay, and then, and then <laughs> is just there, click is there on like a Doug tab? Click on highest price. Let's just see. Oh, yeah, Some just, of these are just going to be Oh, yeah, this will be easy. Okay, so Ferraris, uh, Countach's. Yeah, these are all obvious. Keep going. Those are all pretty obvious. There's going to be Let's some see. that deserve. What's the first piece of junk we see? <laughs> uh, eh, keep Whoa, going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep Still going. good stuff. The Spike. Mega Cruiser was a surprising one. Mega Cruiser for $300,000? I don't, yeah, that's got to be it. it. I don't think it was bad, but it was a surprising one to put it I mean, that's a that's a... That is, I mean, look, a Mega Cruiser is very cool. We have actually one live right now. $310,000. It was wow. drive. Apparently they only made like a 10 in left-hand oh, okay. drive or something, and it was like this. So but the yeah. Hummer EV, uh, that's the that's the most money for the lease car. Yep. Hummer EV for $260,000. Because the dude who bought that is still driving it. I would, yeah. I would argue a 6x6 six 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 conversion. A fake 6x6. Six six. A fake 6x6. Six yeah, fake 6x6 six 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 for six 260 six and They always bring money. It's kind of a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Although most most of the cars in the top yeah, in the first like page are figure. pretty predictable. Yeah. Uh, let's go to page three. Okay, let's see what's uh, going on. Yeah, also pretty predictable. Yeah. There's nothing like that I'm really surprised by. Escalade V, to your point. New oh, wait, where was that? Well, Where's the Escalade V? I mean, I, I think you could make an argument that a lot of these new cars that people are paying oh, crazy wow. over for, like that range. 180000 for the Escalade V. Yeah. Oh. I think that's probably the answer to this question. Like, during the crazy peak yeah, of stuff, yeah, yeah. That when people been. were paying stupid money for some of these things, that's probably that the That would have craziest. been by far. Wow, there's a lot of Hummers. A lot, lot of, of Hummers. A lot of Hummers. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think paying them anyone who paid double MSRP for a Hummer Edition One, that's got to be the yeah. most for the paid the most for the least. Yeah. Um, okay, May said May wants to get some free miles for a daily driver for a year. E thirty nine M five doesn't want an Elise S two thousand or Corvette. What kind of practical car can you drive for a year for free? A manual CTSV. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I wouldn't get an E39 and 5, by the way. I do they're think expensive they won't lose to value, but they're expensive to own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe How about an RS4? Good. Yeah. Possibly an RS4. They're they're pretty nice. They have B7s. If, they're re- if it's recently serviced, you could definitely get a year. Yeah. The B7 RS4 cab, that's the rare one. They Audi finally gives us an RS4. After all this begging and pleading for years and years and years. And they give us the sedan and the... Convertible. Yeah. <laughs> so close to rare. getting they only, it. They only did 300 cabs. They're they super only, rare. And they only sold four of them at Sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they couldn't give them things away. No, of course not. But what are they worth now? Not more. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It Because at the end of the day, it, was, it wasn't like it was based on the TT and it was right. like a sports car. Right. It was like an A4 cab, four-seater. Right, with the engine in it. With yeah, the engine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anonymity says, "I find your lack of JDM cars disturbing." Same. What JD? You had the S car go. That's I the do, most I JDM of JDM. Go. I own. It should be. Pointed you had a Skyline out. too. I had an R32. I should be pointed out. I do own one Japanese car currently, which is a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's not JDM, but I do have a JDM car. So I drive a lot, or a Japanese car. So I drive a lot. I really want a Mark IV. Um, a Supra. Yeah. I have this big thing about how I want a, 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 an automatic uh, NA automatic uh-huh. because they're they're affordable and you could daily it. But yeah. like, I really want a Mark IV. Do you not? You look at me like I'm nuts. No, you see them? I, I don't. I I I feel like Paul Walker in that shit. I, you you don't. I, I want one for like three months because because the memory of watching them do burnouts on the highway is stuck in my brain forever. Yeah. And that just yeah. looks fun. The ones I've driven have never impressed that. me as much. No, no. I, I think it's generally agreed that it is not the car that people pay for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks cool. Skylines as hell. drive way better than when than I see, absolutely. But the right hand driver sucks. Yeah. When I see a Mark IV on the street, though. That's sure. that's a bigger event for me than seeing almost any for like I'm like wow this person driving. If I driving see a great it. one, if I see a great one, oh yeah, I, yeah. if I see an NA Auto, Ooh, you I run up to the old woman driving and I'm like hey, <laughs> Gladys. Yeah, 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 I know what I have. <laughs> right. I'll give you I'll give you five now to put it in your will for me. <laughs> you can have it now. You get paid right. It, take it right it now. Keep it until you die. Just let me get it when you're done. <laughs> Um, uh, no, I agree. I wish I had more JDM cars, but on this subject of focusing my world of cars, I think I'm just not going to pursue more vehicles. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I got a Land Cruiser. Uh, <clears throat> Tyler says, "What is the most unexpected quirk or feature you found in a car that you think should be implemented you in know all what cars?" The answer we just that talked is? about the keypad, which I agree yes. with. And by the way, shout out to Ford. My Mach E has a keypad. Yeah, they still you, do. You can. It's a. It's a touchscreen. It's in the yeah. touchscreen. But if you lose the key. 
You can remotely unlock the car with the phone or have someone unlock it, and then you can type a code on the screen to start it. And oh, I didn't realize that was true of the Mach-E. Yeah, yeah, I know that some of the cars still have like a touchpad keypad oh, on for the sure. doors. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. How about you, that? We have, mine, you can actually start and drive with, with the a The answer code. to this question, though, in my mind, is that feature that Hyundais and Kias have where you put on the turn signal and the blind spot camera shows up uh-huh. in your cluster. That yeah, is that's so nice. good. Yeah, that's nice. And no one else has yet done it, and it, I think it is just the greatest Tesla thing in the world. It. Te- and Honda had it for a little yeah. while, but only on the blind spot side. They called yeah. it Lane Watch. And I don't think they do it anymore. I think it is amazing. I love that That, that is a good feature, yeah. Uh, you know what they should get rid of? Uh, puddle lights that look like the logo of the car. Oh, God. It's yes, so, I agree. Stop with that. So embarrassing. <laughs> it is so embarrassing. Especially when it's like a Bentley or something. You're like, ugh. And every time so and like, I'm coming out of dinner with like my wife and another couple, and like you walk over to your my, that station wagon, which is a very subtle car. Yeah. And you open the door, and it's like, this is it's gross. Extremely. Do you want some tape? <laughs> Dude, my, my, just cover my Ford does cover a fucking horse. Yeah, that's yeah, they right. should Mustangs have a, do, they too. Have a, huh? Mustangs yeah, do it, my too. Ford, it, oh, well, he yeah. has yeah. a Mustang. Right. And technically, that's true. You do have a Mustang. I don't Every refer to it as Every single Mustang such. owner I meet, I say, Maki. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> Mach V. Uh, V8. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says, Doug, you talked about your expensive license plate in one of your videos. What is your opinion on narking on people who have Montana plates? CHP has a tip line. They do have a tip line. I wouldn't narc on people, but, like, I'm a fan of registering the vehicles in the world in which you live, uh, or at least paying taxes. I got some of my cars registered in Massachusetts, but taxes ain't cheap there either. Dude, I'm not a fucking narc. Narking I'm is, not going to tell nar- on people. Narking is narking on anything. But I, there's a Unless lot of people. Unless you witness a murder, fucking narking is a shitty thing to do. It, totally. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I think it's stupid. I also think it's kind of a waste of CHP resources, to be totally honest. Frankly, the, the biggest problem is California, California does it, and some of the other states do it in a stupid way. Um, everybody I know who does Montana has done it for smog, not for sales tax. Yeah. Most of the guys I know would happily pay sales tax. They could just get their car registered here. And I think that California should have some sort of exemption for super low mileage. Like my buddy with the Mercy Lago drives maybe a thousand miles a year. Yeah. And it's like, what's the point of ha- okay? He's paid, he has to do the whole thing, pay the whole sales. Give him some sort of break on that. The car's not being driven much. It's smog is not an issue. Yeah. A thousand miles a year. Yeah. But I don't know. It's a stupid. It's a. It, when I lived in Pennsylvania, there was an exception for like under three thousand mile a year. You didn't have to go through emissions. Yeah. Oh wow. Which makes I mean, it's sense. Just- well, it's practical. It's not it's contributing to, the, right. our, to our actual problem. Uh, we, a, a lot of the people I know who do Montana would pay sales tax if it wasn't for the onerous smog regs. And that's true. It's not everybody complains about California. But it's not just California that has that rule. And Montana creates a safe haven for that when the car is, by the way, being operated here anyway. It's not yeah. like anybody. I mean, that, that applies to older cars. When someone has like a brand new 2023 Ferrari, whatever, on Montana, that's not I think smog. those people are insane and stupid. And I wouldn't do that. And it's a sign to me that you can't afford your car. But- if that's what they won't do, then so I still wouldn't tell on them. I saw a Montana vanity plate the other day, which is someone not understanding that process <laughs> at to, all. Just keep it drawing attention to their fucking plate. Right. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, Sam says, uh, Doug, have you thought about adding buyer and seller feedback to cars and bids? Would be interesting, especially for repeat sellers. Yeah, that's a good idea. We've talked about it. We probably ought to do it. You know, the easiest way ultimately to get feedback is just kind of look through what they've done before. Um, if they sold, what have they bought? Did those transactions close? Is everybody happy with them? That kind of thing. But yes, as it, as it scales and as there's more volume, I think that having feedback is probably a pretty good idea. Sure. Red Rover says, what year do you consider to be peak car? And are you interested in owning any of the current crop of sports cars? Peak car was 05. No question about it. I think we all agree. Yeah, it's a good year. It is a good year. Ford GT, Ford all of the GT, cars, all the supercars available in manual. All the supercars were sticks. Yeah. In my, truly, in my mind, 05 was peak car. Um, am I interested in owning any of the current crop of sports cars? Not really. I don't know. I, I, I get in these Ferraris. I just had the 296. That thing is so cool. Yeah. It is so beautiful. It is so fast. I do not personally have any interest in it. It is an automatic car. It does not bring Which me... one did you drive? The Assetto Fiorano one with it the was, yellow lipstick I'll on it or, or this, the red one? It was red. It was red. And it was fast. <laughs> I yeah, loved it. I thought it was so cool. Fast. I'm going to recommend it to everybody who comes to me and says, what should I get? Lambo or Ferrari? Whatever. McLaren. But like for me personally... It's just I love that V12 Lambo shifting those gears. That's sure. a car. If I was going to buy a brand new car, it would be a Storato. Yeah. It's just I almost did. I was this I, close. Uh, no, but you and you made the right decision. I think so. But 
it, 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 but excluding Kuntosh, which is like, yeah, duh. Right. Uh, Storado is exceptionally fun. So and uh, And, and so off-road cool. supercars are fucking where it's at. Yep. Uh, ben Hell Stahl yeah. wants to know, why are Amira deliveries taking so long for delivery to North <laughs> because America? Because it's Lotus. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. I have question. no idea. <laughs> it's Lotus. This is, of course that's what's going on. Yeah. Have you driven the electric SUV yet? They had it Zach in LA. did. You did? Yeah, yeah, I acted. I I didn't get to. It's very nice inside. I don't really like the way it looks, but it, for them to build that was shocking. It was like this is really yeah. well put together. I've seen pictures and of it very next nice to normal inside. cars, and it seems big. It, it is large. It's very big. Yeah, it is large. It's very big, but Opposite it's, it's very nice loaded. inside. It feels way upscale. Far. It, it feels way cloth. nicer than the Amira. What? Oh, does it, it has fancy cloth. It oh, has fancy high cloth. End cloth. Fancy stereo. Yeah. Uh, fancy screens. I think it's the same screen and computer as the EV Hummer has, which is like Unreal Engine super speed yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a weird huh. fucking thing, but they need it. They need to sell I it. I guess so. Otherwise, like the they go away. But no, Emira, I'm not really all that surprised that there's delays, and Lotus is, a, is Lotus. Yeah. It'll always be. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't have an answer. I remember they were waiting on some kind of approvals when we were in. We were there in July. We were at Hethel. We saw five hundred Amiras sitting there, finished, waiting to be shipped out all over the world. All sitting there still, probably. I. Uh, you know, there was also a couple trucks picking them up and taking them somewhere. But um, I think it's U.S. import. They problems. were waiting on some kind of approvals process, but I, we didn't have any information beyond. I that. remember hearing some of that stuff too. Well, because they had problems with. COVID supply chain, like they, they've had problems every step along the way. Then they had problems with part delivery with Panama Canal being closed. Like every, yeah, when, every when major the ship, global issue. When the issue. ship fucking blocked that canal. You mean the Suez Canal? Yes. Was Suez or there was, there was what, what do you mean? Was it when the that, Suez or the Pal? The ever, the ever Given? You don't yeah. know when this happened? Yeah, when I do that not remember. It did, a, it did a power slide into a sand. Oh, right. Yeah. This yeah. was one of the great moments of yeah. the last 10 years. That in navigation and nautical that stuff. That traffic right. jam. I'm not up on nautical news. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Nantucket. There were lots of fucking Lotus parts. Not on yeah. that boat, but, but, on but in, the the tra- in the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sean says, how did you arrive at the name Cars and Bids, and what were some of the others you considered? We didn't consider any others, really. Cars and Bids came out of Quirks and Features. It was yeah. like, I'm a simple guy that says yeah. simple things, and Cars and Bids is a simple thing, and yeah. it made sense. Yeah. It took me six months to come up with the smoking tire, and I have a, a, law, a notebook full of names I considered. Do you most regret of which it at terrible. all? No. I think it's a good name. Not that I think you should, but I'm just curious no, no. if you've ever looked back and been like... I found the notebook recently and looked through them, and I was like... Yeah, I made the right decision. <laughs> and I don't regret it. I think the Smoking Tire is a very good name. Throttle yeah. House was on that list, but we crossed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stew Dog says, can you give any advice on work-life balance? What challenges have you faced since having kids? Um, now, new money, Doug, fucking buys his free time in the summer now. Yeah, I, I work-life balance is very important to me. But I will say, when I first had my son, for the first two years, it wasn't. I mean, I just worked all the time because we had cars and bids. We took the investment. We sold the majority of it. I mean, that was a huge deal for us. And now I'm able to spend more time. And I realize just how important that is. And it's that's one of the best things in my life. I don't know. Spend more time with your family. That's the only thing that matters. Uh, Luke has a lot of words but says, is there any piece of writing that stands out to you as memorable before you went all in on video? Luke says, my writing was incredible in the Jalopnik era. I totally agree. <laughs> I, was a, was good. I was a better writer. That I think my videos are fine, but like I was a good writer. Yeah, when what I happened saw, to that? When I, first, when I first saw you switch to videos, I was like, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Doug's writing is really good. They like that. The writing was great. I don't know about this. You know this. what happened, though? People stopped. It was so funny. When I worked for Jalopnik, we were the cutting edge. We yeah, were like yeah. upending legacy publications. And mm-hmm. now video is upending Jalopnik, which in a span of 10 years has become a legacy publication. Yeah. Like what an interesting quick turn of like, yeah. and now TikTok is upending YouTube. Yeah. Pretty soon they're going to look at me on YouTube as a legacy yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, the best writing I ever did, of course, was was covering Ed Bullion's cross country run. That piece um, was incredible and, and I think is, is amazing and I love it dearly. It's a good one. Uh, I don't remember it. But you I'm don't sure. remember that? I mean, I'm sure I read it at the fucking time, but it doesn't stand out you in my mind You don't remember when Ed Bullion right did the run and beat Alex Roy and the two I of do. them got in this fight and it was a whole thing? I I do remember it. I remember piece. it's like existence, but like <laughs> ten years ago. I don't. I'm sorry, I didn't remember oh, the, like the, the a fucking article you wrote ten years ago. The particular story I don't really care that much about. But you remember when the event occurred? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought you were yeah. just really <laughs> impressed by your own article. <laughs> no, I do. No, I remember like yeah the, when it happened. The, it was it like happening. a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew says if you were given an opportunity to direct an automotive cinematic movie, what type of film would you want to make? 
Oh, mm. wait, there's an answer to this that I always think of. Oh, okay. Le Mans, 1992-ish. Before they switched to, you know, the long straight. Oh, before they put the chicane. They put a chicane in because the cars were going too fast. Yeah. A team was fielded that year by Peugeot uh -huh. to set the fastest all-time speed on oh, the track. Right. Yeah. They knew that was the, their only goal. They knew the no car way. would fail. Yeah. They knew the car would only make it a 50 laps. Yeah. But their goal was to, to set the speed record because they knew that next never... year the wow. chicane would go in and that. they would hold the record in perpetuity. Yeah. And they did. They set the all-time record, what? which was like 405 like... kilometers an hour. Or it was, like, it was like 408, but they had the 405 was coming out. The new Peugeot 405 was coming out. Uh -huh. So they made it. They made them call it 405. It went what? 252. Yeah, yeah. 252. What is that in kilometers? That uh, whatever car 405 was. kilometers. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. The WMP And that, that remains and will always remain, of course, because the yeah, chicane went in. That would be ever. a great movie. That watching would be the, good. Oh, man, watching this, some yeah. idiots in a boardroom be like, I have an idea. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, look at that! Look at that car. It looks like it was just for that too. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I like and I like that it has a rickshaw on the fucking nose. <laughs> There's a photo of a rickshaw on the nose. It does. <laughs> what is going on there? I don't know. It's very French. Oh, uh, that's cool. That's a, yeah. I like that very. Nine hundred horsepower, nineteen hundred pounds. There, um, when we had um, <laughs> we had uh, it was not reliable. Just Pete Calloway on our show, which is Reeves' son, yeah, told us about when they went to Le Mans with their like Corvette based thing, yeah. and uh, the car had like a mechanical some t somewhere out on the track, and uh, the driver just got out of the car and walked away and was never seen seen again. Like they just found the car out there, and the guy was just gone. And so I would do a fictional movie that starts with that scene. <laughs> the guy, and it's it's like whatever this dude did for the rest of his life. Do you know what the life. other great racing story? By the way, I'm not a motorsports guy, but these stories come out of racing. You know what the other great racing story is? To promote a James Bond movie in like 2009, the film production company put a real million dollar diamond on the nose cone oh, of a yeah. Formula One oh, car. You know I the story? That. Yeah, in yeah. Monaco, yeah. the car crashed, the diamond fell out, it was never recovered. <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing. They were looking in the, in the rails, they were looking at yeah. Armco. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It's now like in a rapper's forehead, you know. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, Trey says, uh, Matt, what should Doug's first project car be? You don't like you. Th you don't like modifying things. No, no he's you don't big like... wrench. You're big wrench. <laughs> me and you. You mean you? Me and yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Not me specifically. Well, we built that Peugeot. We built that car yeah. together. <laughs> we were like 14. We, we did. Yeah, it was good. Absolutely. It should. It should be just. You. Sh it should just be a fucking uh, the most boring car you could think of, but with quirks added to it. Mm. Aftermarket quirks. Well, honestly, wasn't that the premise of Exhibit's show? Yes. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I forgot that's already <laughs> been <laughs> done on Pit My Ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ride, right? Quirk my ride. <laughs> that's fucking. We'll put a fish tank That's in. very Quirk funny. That's literally what they did. That's actually <laughs> correct, uh, uh, very accurate, and very. Have you funny. ever reviewed a uh, no, pit my and, ride car? Those cars were never like maintained and all yeah. became total trash. I would love to. You know how hard it is to maintain a fish tank. At the point. <laughs> Does Freddie <laughs> ever lot. told you how it much money he made? Grand Caravan. Did Freddie ever tell you how much money he made by repimping the car? Yeah, he like flipped that van, right? Dude, he. He told me how much money he made because he did it for like holiday week, like two yeah. years ago or something. I almost fell out of my fucking chair yeah, when he I told bet. me. He probably made more than the television show originally <laughs> made doing, just repimping the fucking car in the same way. It was like, it was so genius and meta. Yeah, no, he did do that. I remember because I had a crazy big video that same week. Yeah. And he like stayed ahead of me on the yeah. trending. Yeah, unbelievable. Bad Gardner says, I'm currently 25 years old. What will be the $50 million road car when I'm 50? Hmm. So in 25 years, hmm. what will be a $50 That's million an dollar car? What an interesting question. Uh, he's betting on Zondas. Zondas is a possibility Zondas for sure. are probably... And he says Enzo. I don't agree with that, but I think F50 possibly. F50, Those cars yeah. are already... I mean, Zondas... Zondas, by the way, don't transact. If you go on Classic.com and look at Zondas, there's no history of transactions. I have heard that they're selling for like five million, something think, like that. I think, don't they... Because don't, doesn't Pagani buy them back and then resell? Like, that's what Koenigsegg does. Koenigsegg wants you to, to sell your car back through them. 
both so they can go through it and to kind of keep public sales off Interesting. the Because the there are no public auction results of Zondas, which is yeah. weird because everything has a couple. I imagine that, that they want to be in Horatio's good graces, and so they go they back through the Zonda ecosystem. I think that Zonda is a great possibility. There were only like 150 Zondas total, yeah. and some of them are heinous. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. So you, there's maybe only 100 good ones? Yeah, some of them are bad. And F50s are already $5 million. It's hard to imagine that doesn't keep going like yeah. that. Yeah. Probably those, in my mind. And Countach's. <laughs> Too many. No. Uh, Chris mm. says, besides uh, cars, watches, and license plates, is there anything either of you collect or are passionate about? I'm passionate about an enormous number of things. The financial crisis in 2008 is a big one. <laughs> I love the financial crisis. read all the books. I'm so I, did, I rewatched <laughs> The Big Short last week for like the 10th time. Oh, yeah? It's so great and entertaining. It yeah. is so great. And it, 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 that's a good... You should watch Too Big to Fail with William I've Hurt. Seen, yeah, I've seen that one. That yeah. is a great... And the best one is Margin Call, which has Kevin uh -huh. Spacey, who is canceled. Yeah. Don't. I've seen that movie. It's pretty yeah. good. Well, I mean, he, he deserved it. He's a good actor, <laughs> just a bad babysitter. <laughs> just a bad <laughs> I think that's not a. Um, what else? What else do you? What else are you passionate about? You can. I mean, I'm not anymore. about. No, I don't collect anything besides cards and watches. I have, I have a Demolition Man themed bathroom. So if you know of any good Demolition Man, really, yeah. You huh. know what I just got for the Demolition Man bathroom at the farmers market by us? There's a new stall who they do these. Uh, they get the actual films, like for the the movies that were projected in movie theaters, and they cut up the film and they encase strips of the film, like a couple seconds of the movie, in this in glass, in these glass blocks. That's a cool idea. And so, they had a bunch, and I I walked up to them and I was like, hey, random question, do you have any Demolition Man? And they're like, no, sorry. And I gave them my phone number and I said, here, if you if you get some Demolition Man, call me, I'll, I'll buy it. And so I, th I was on the way to Pilates class. And so I, I turned around as, as I was leaving Pilates class and walked back by the booth and she was like, oh, hey, Demolition Man guy. And I was like, what's up? And they're like, we made some calls, we got some. No way. <laughs> and so I have, I have I, they go, okay, is there a particular scene you want? And I go, well, I'm like a car fan, so like anything with those like concept cars would be cool. And the guy's like, oh, and it turns out the guy who runs this business as a cinematographer who has worked on Top Gear and the Grand Tour oh, and does wow. aerial photography for all of this stuff. <laughs> and so he was like, yeah, I got you. Give me like two weeks. So I'm getting a three seconds of Demolition Man film encased in glass oh, to hang cool. on the... That's very cool. Which is pretty rad. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So yeah, I collect weird Demolition Man shit. Okay. Uh, Prashan says, luxury manufacturers sometimes have a Citroen moment where they make something weird, such as the BMW i8. What is your favorite Citroen moment? Obvious. Aston Martin Signet. <clears throat> right. Right. Boom. Don't even have to don't yeah. even have to elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if there's that clip floating around the internet of um Jujaro, they're in mm -hmm. interviewing him. You've seen this? <laughs> and he says he says curved lines are bullshit. Yeah. And the interviewer says, elaborate on that. And he says, No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to watch the video. It's just the just the, <laughs> the, the captions are right there. And it's really funny. So good. Yeah, I remember seeing that from a few years ago. Uh Ryan Hayes says our micro brand watches that advertise heavily on Instagram, junk. No, not necessarily. Some are junk, some are good. Um the fact that they our advertising is not what determines that. Um, John says, I'm ready to sell my Corvette C7. Should I sell it now at the start of winter or wait until spring when there may be more buyers? The, you should sell it right now on cars and bids immediately <laughs> with no reserve. No. Um, Do you find seasonal seasonal results for sports cars yeah. in springtime? I mean, tr it depends a little on where he is. Like, if he's in Phoenix, it probably doesn't really matter. C7. Now, now people aren't really going to ship those long distances. But like generally speaking, yeah, you want to wait. Uh, I would wait until the spring to sell a car like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Liang from China says, uh, I've noticed more than 50% of the cars on the road are sporting a green plate in yep. China, meaning they're at least hybrid or electrified. In that group, 25 to 30% are Tesla and more than half are domestic brands. The Taycan seems like the only choice for high end and are very popular. Does Porsche have another Cayenne moment at their hand, or is it just luck? 
I mean, it's not luck that Porsche has has gotten in there, and that's good. But this this question hits on something really, really interesting, which is like China is eating our lunch in electric cars. Yeah. Whether everybody's like afraid to go into the electric car world, China. 50% of the road have a green plate. That's probably true. And several of the domestic Chinese brands are electric only. And yeah. they're selling tens of thousands, hundreds mm-hmm. of thousands of cars. Yeah. And Tesla's really big there. Like, it's, Isn't like BYD is like bigger than Tesla yeah, in China? Yeah, and they're pure electric. Yeah. Like the, the future is like clearly it's, – it's an interesting thing. One wonders how we come out of this. We are – people are pushing back so hard on – Fuel on 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 going to making the electric transition. Meanwhile, China is like making it in front of us, and this Maybe, is another way that you, they're going to kind of leapfrog. And I us. don't want to be like fucking white guy speculating here, but is you know they're they had a, like a big smog problem, which we we sort of solved the smog problem within the gasoline thing most of the time, right? Maybe maybe to go from smog to convince people to electric is easier than to go from, well, we solved that smog problem and now, and and, and we're also relying on private companies and I fucking capitalism for this charge There's this probably part network. of it, because smog became a real issue, but I think also, don't you think Chinese are just, they're not as interested in the driving dynamics and the engine sound, and they're maybe, like, maybe they're, not. They're, they're beginning the, their journey with the automobile, well, they basically. they had a lot of poverty 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have a middle class, really, so they didn't have this exposure to muscle right. cars probably in the 60s and 70s, so for them, 70s, it's just so they like, don't care. Well, and it probably helps their energy independence, because they're generating a lot of electricity, but they import a lot of oil from other countries. Yeah. Right. So everything... And it's cheap to own, relatively cheap to own. They can make the cars cheaper as a result of the electric thing. Mm-hmm. It's clear what's what's going on here, and, and the electric future is coming, and it's coming to China, whether you want it in the States or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I I just did performance electric car of the year with Road and Track, and the Taycan was by far the nicest one to drive, whether you're going fast or whether you're going slow. It was just, it was the best car. And yeah. I realized the early cars had problems with batteries and whatever, like a lot of these mainstream car EVs did. Um, but the fact is, if I wanted to buy an expensive EV right now, a Taycan would be my only option. What about the Kia EV9? I mean, I don't need a giant. Let's get, him a, let's get him a Kia EV9. Have you driven it? Yeah. It's is a it nice? Minivan. It's Love a minivan. It. Drives like a minivan. Love it. Into right. it. Did you, hear, did you hear that downstairs? They just fire tested my door. Was they did a, the, the drop door. Kia EV9. Yeah. Starting uh, out. <laughs> we engine swapped it. <laughs> All right. Let's With the see. Quattroporte. Exactly. Yeah. One or two more, and then we will call the game because I really have to pee. Um, great mate, mate. How does being an entrepreneur in the automotive industry differ from the more commonly discussed industries like tech? Are there, wait, wait, all right, hang on. Are there other potential automotive business opportunities you have but don't have the interest in pursuing? Now that is a more interesting, that's the interesting one. Are there other, what, what, what have you been approached about doing business-wise that you were not interested in doing? I am never going to start another business again as long as I live. If I come up with any other ideas, I will put them on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and other people, <laughs> others can take them and launch them and become very rich. Yeah. I will never do it again. It was too hard. It's too difficult. You do this. You got to deal with stuff. This is also hard and difficult right. and stressful. Right. And at least, at least once a week, at least once a week, probably two or three times a week, I go into a deep depression that I am a total failure and that I've wasted my money building these things and that Do I'm an idiot. Do you ever go to the DMV and the people are there and they just work yeah, from yeah, nine to four yeah, yeah. and then their day is over yeah, and, then they and if home. they work great or if they work poorly, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and be jealous of the simplicity sometimes? Yeah. Sure. Sometimes I do, yes. I, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Like, it's worked out very well for me, obviously. But there was a lot of period where it was really hard. Yeah. And I'm not joking when I say I'm never doing this again. Maybe I could see it l- long in the future if I get bored one day. But, like, this – are there other oppor- po- potential oppor- automotive business opportunities? Yeah, I get a couple ideas. I will be doing none of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, I have one – I mean, like, there's a place that we love in, in England called Caffeine and Machine which is a permanent cars and coffee establishment. Oh. It has a restaurant, a coffee shop, People just a show bar, up in cool cars retail, Anytime you go there, and a small a hotel. And, I'm, and I go, this would kill yeah. in California. And, and, and I'm, I'm always sort of like, maybe we could put one here. Maybe we could put one here. And then, and then about 10 minutes later, I go, you know what I want? 
to be a customer of a fucking place like this. <laughs> right. I do not want to own a restaurant slash hotel slash retail establishment right. slash, slash event space. I don't think people realize just how hard it is and how much risk there is, too. I think that's another thing. I think people think, like, oh, it worked out. They see you driving a Carrera GT, and they're like, oh, that's a – well, there was an enormous amount of risk and a depression, you know, hard, mental hardship, yeah. liability. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you don't really realize um, doing it. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And oh, oh, I'm happy to continue to grow this one. Yeah. I'll send you guys some ideas. <laughs> yeah. I uh I, I I it it it's it's mentally crushing multiple times a week. I watched an interview with the this, the guy who founded Nvidia. Did you see this? It's like been making the rounds on Instagram. Yeah, and I think he said like I would not do this yeah, again. The, yeah. The interviewer was like, "Do you what what would you change? What would you have done differently?" He said, "I just wouldn't have done it." It was just yeah, yeah, too hard. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like an enormous amount of incredible work for an yeah. enormous time period. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I also, I, not like the DMV, but there are definitely a couple times in the week where I go, you know, if I was just an employee, I'd probably be a good employee. I wouldn't get fired. Right. I, would, I would get my work done. Right. And then I would, I would go home and I would enjoy my weekend. Right, but we have Wouldn't one. We... we have one business that exists in space, in time and space, and I have another business that is open seven days a week. So it's like I know the it... DMV closes at four, and then they're good. Yeah, they're just good. Yeah, they go to the beach. <laughs> you ever go to the beach? <laughs> I, I, occasionally. But yeah, they, they it's hard every day, <laughs> but it's fucking hard. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I will say, I mean, the fact that you don't have. Auctions that end on weekends, most of the part, most of the time, don't, right? Don't you? So far, yeah, we I mean, don't. I'm and sure. there's not plans to right now, but obviously the other guys did, and you know, you never. But like, you know, Thaddeus, who works for you now, is appreciative of the fact that your business, we all are, operates during normal hours. And by the way, and yeah, so are the sellers. Yeah, because weekend auctions, not okay. good. <laughs> I mean, you, you take a look. You take a look at some is, of those oh, numbers. Really? Is it not good? I would. I would not want my car to end on a weekend. Oh, that's a good and idea. And I think that okay. weekend, when we're looking at comps, weekend comps are... They're, oh, okay. Good to know. You want, it's so funny because everybody comes, submits their car, and they're like, I want my car to end on a Saturday. So everybody's at their computer. It's like, no. <laughs> everybody's at their computer Monday through Friday. <laughs> yeah. they're, just, they're, they're looking at our site to not do work. That's yeah, yeah, why yeah. you do not want your car to end on a Saturday. Trust me. People at their kids' soccer games. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Michael says, can you foresee a time when a new GT3 can be ordered without ADM? Yeah, but geez. I mean, I think Porsche doesn't want new GT3s to be ordered without ADM. I well, think. Porsche corporate, but what they don't have any, they don't have a say in that. So. Well, but they could just they can make more. They can make they less. They can make more. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> cost them more to build a GT3 than it costs them to make any other 911. Yeah, that Once is it, maybe to develop, but like the parts aren't that that, that more. Much yeah, more there probably will be a time, but ult ultimately, like it's a supply and demand thing, and so people get hung up on that they have to pay over ADM, but that's what the market bears at that time. Like you want the car. Pay the price. Yeah. If you don't want the car, you can't complain you're not getting it at a price that is ultimately less than someone else is willing to pay. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. That's like the way capitalism right. goes. It's a free as much economy. as I hate to say it, yeah. for these people, I feel bad that they can't get the cars at sticker, but like many other people are waiting to pay over. So like I wonder if they're if psychologically it would be different if the car was just priced twenty thousand dollars higher. I don't get why they don't just do that. Yeah. I don't get why they don't just do that. I guess they kind of have, and they're still an idiot. Yeah. Like, GT3 RSs are now like $350,000 cars. Yeah. They're still 50 over. Yeah. Maybe there's people who pay over for whatever it was. Uh, Tuffo says, thoughts on importing a manual E38 from Europe. Worth the, ha worth the We've hassle? We've sold a couple. No? I feel like we have one live right now. I feel like you could manual swap one that's already here. Yeah, but the cool thing about the Euro ones, we, we sold a cloth seat manual E38 for nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, type, yeah, there it is. There, that's, that's not the cloth seat one, but this is on the site right now, a manual E38. This is some base But here's the stuff. thing. You don't want a 730. You right. want one Although with this a, is a V8, but You yes. want one with a fucking M5 motor in it and a manual. Right. Like, Those are the ones you really which want. Which you could build yourself here using we, a car that started with... Keep going down, or just, or just right put there, manual... Right there, oh, it's an M5. Put no, manual no. in the... Uh, go back up, just put manual in the transmission line. And then Still only one. Scroll down. There's because no, these are all E39 M5 swaps. 
There was one other. I feel like we sold. That's like the one you want right there. The red bottom oh, yeah. left. No, no, that E39 yeah, that is the one. M5 engine swap. That's the one. Short wheelbase, Ooh. manual. That's exactly that the car you want. Good looking car. Eighteen thousand dollars. Wait, go back one, Zach. Go back one. The car right next to that one, that 94 730i. Look at this thing. Cloth seat E38. Oh, this is the yeah. base, base, base E38. 10, if you were bucks. in Denmark and you were embarrassed about the fact that you were rich, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is what you owned wow. in 1994. See, I love that cloth. Look at that That's manual fantastic. air conditioning. I mean, this is this is just, it's a 7 Series, but like, we yeah. didn't want to go too crazy. Barely. Barely. <laughs> That's barely. just like... Yeah, falling that's off. like I'm tall and don't fit in a three series. Right. So what can I get? So what, what do yeah. I have to get this? I don't have yeah, a choice. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You, what you want is the M5 powertrain swap. And so to answer this question, it's probably not worth it. Just buy one on cars and bids. Yeah. Um, last one. I like this one. Adriel says, cars don't make good financial sense. How did you justify spending on your passion for cars before you had disposable income? Do you have financial rules that you go by? Um for for a, a fun car. How did you justify? You didn't really I think that from the very beginning, your every car that you bought that was nice was was used to generate content with. Yeah, pretty much. I also think that like it's important to keep in mind that like a lot of stuff doesn't make financial sense. Right. And so like you the, you have to let your emotions win sometimes because otherwise you're going to be driving around in a Toyota Matrix right. for the rest of your life and not an XRS because that wouldn't make financial sense. <laughs> Most hobbies don't make financial sense. Yeah. Just cars can be a more expensive hobby than others. Right. I think, and, and honestly, I don't make a lot of content anymore with the cars, and obviously I still have them. But like, it, at some point, if this is what you want to do, you got to kind of just do it, and you got to watch. I mean, that really doesn't make financial sense, right? You can't even practically use them to go a place, right? Um, <laughs> but like, it's you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't think it makes financial sense ninety five percent of the time, even though I. But isn't this why we earn money? Is to yes. like spend it in a way that makes us happy. Yes. And so, like at the end of the day, otherwise I, I, the DMV is hiring. The DMV, and wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> you know, you could be there with the license plates all day. Yeah, <laughs> the license plate got a they got a UCLA license yeah, plate. You could be in the presence of all these license plates. It'd be plates. cool. They could, <laughs> I could see when they move from nine J to nine K. Do you have a large collection of license plates? Yeah, I got some license plates. How many? Do you not? I don't know. Actually, I, I should know. But I got some great ones. Like I have a, the license plate they issued to Miss Washington in Washington State. Imagine driving around with that on your car as I'm saying that and thinking about it. People yeah. would be like, yeah. Leering. It's like you attract, yeah, you attract their weird, weird That's group. like, stalk me to my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> um, that is weird, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go broke paying for your hobby. That's a, that's a bad move. You should not, you shouldn't like finance your sports car at some crazy rate or some crazy right you know there I, was a, I never had a hard and fast specific rule about how much but I, I was always reasonable about it there was a guy back in the day who i used to see at the car meets back in the day uh who we'll call lambo steve his name wasn't lambo steve it was lambo followed by another common first name but okay. we'll call him lambo steve okay. in 2006 he financed a 2002 mercy for 144 months. Oh. Shouldn't have done that. That was probably... Hey, he paid it off. The, the fun. Yeah. <laughs> he paid for two of he them. He paid it off and the values are up. So he, <laughs> he might... Great. You know, Follow Lambo, Lambo Steve's Lambo Steve lead. might have fucking... Yeah, if you finance it for long enough, the values will come back around. That's right. 250 <laughs> GTOs, you know, back in the day. God, that is so funny. Yeah. You, no, you, that is not the what you should do. And people do that with stuff that I just like, oh, man. McLaren's, yeah, like damn, yeah. Long long term the, loans on the math is the, the math is there. It's for you. You can see it. You <laughs> right. can see it in front of you. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, but yeah, don't do that. But but yeah, if you got to lose a little money to have a little fun in your car, like, right. That's okay. Right. That's that's what it's for. Right. Uh, thank you, Doug. Good to see you. Happy holidays. Nice. This show will actually air after Thanksgiving. So oh, really? I hope everyone's had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, because we're 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 doing a lot of traveling. So, oh, is it? Yeah, this will air after. Can we go up on Black Friday? Yes, Black will. Friday was always a huge revenue day. Oh, really? Throw me up on Black Friday. We could drop it on Black Friday. The one show a week, drop it on Black Friday. We'll do that. I don't give a fuck. I think you. I think we make the rules. But are people bitch, out dude? shopping and fighting for goods, or are they? Gonna well, look? that's all the they listen while they're doing it in front of you. Hey. 
Buy my stuff. I mean, we can okay. we can drop it on Black Friday. Hey. <laughs> Why fucking not? All right, fine. Buy the, my stuff. The, the Thanksgiving special. Doug DeMiro on Black Friday. How, did you? Did we go through all of the uh, the what? This one's did you for eat Zach. A whole both sleeves? No, uh, we. I had one. I had and one. You had one. And now you're gonna have this. One? And so, I am very hungry. So that's uh, that's seven. So he had seven. How many are contained in each sleeve? Five uh, in each. Five so in he had each. Seven. Oh yeah. man, I had seven. That's a lot. That's you. Your snack, I had a busy morning. Snack I filmed record. the Toyota Tacoma. It took a lot <laughs> out of new, me. The new Tacoma? <laughs> yeah. Did, did you, you drive it? What do you think? I filmed like some guys used Tacoma. Today. Maybe. Did you I hammer a new yeah, I drove the new Tacoma. 400,000 mile Tacoma. I drove the new Tacoma and my opinions are <gasps> embargoed. Oh. Wait, Until Black TRD Friday? Pro? No. Okay. But isn't this live also? Because For like eight people. Wait. I'll tell you one thing that's interesting about it. Yeah. There's a button on the side that raises the tailgate. Oh, power tailgate? Yes, and a button on the side. Yes, it has like, a power tailgate. Uh, where's the button exactly? The tail light, but on the side. Oh, wow. And on either side. So it doesn't matter. You could walk oh, up to yeah. your Tacoma on the driver's that. side. Uh-huh. Or, or the passenger. <laughs> you could walk up to your Tacoma on the passenger side. Push the button. That way, if you're right-hand driver, left-hand drive Tacoma, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. They just make it easier. A lot of right. RHD Tacomas out there, yeah. Good. They're out there somewhere, to aren't they? No. No? They, they don't, don't sell, sell anywhere? Outside no, it's a Hilux. Oh, shit. It's a Hilux. And it's a different the, truck. It's a, yeah, no. it's a Hilux in the RHD. Yeah. Middle um, East? I'm buying used. They're all left. They're all in the left, though. They drive our trucks. That's the, I know. The crazy thing about the Middle East, you go out there and it's like, well, yeah. it's just America. They shoot a lot of our guns, too. <laughs> so. shoot guns and drive trucks in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much difference between Despite Syria and Texas. Despite the fact that all of these Texans and all these Syrians think they hate each other <laughs> due to religious differences. You guys have a they, lot more in common What they truly enjoy thought. doing is driving raptors over sand dunes. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that hit me the most when I went to Dubai. Oppressing it's like, wait women, a minute. driving off-road trucks, <laughs> and shooting guns. Telling people who They're they can't the, fuck. Yeah, telling, <laughs> telling other people what to do. It is interesting, it's isn't perfect. it? When I went to Dubai, I'll never forget that. I landed there, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> and also, and you're in Dubai, it's all American fast food restaurants. Yeah, yeah. It's like most people are going to Wendy's and Chili's and yeah, stuff. It was, it's, and it's like, th- I'm just in Florida. It's weird. <laughs> I'm just in Florida. <laughs> yeah, Dubai, wa- think they want to be Vegas, but they're much more like Phoenix. Um, <laughs> you know, they really, they're, tr- they're trying for Vegas, but the, the rules don't allow that. So it looks like Vegas on the outside, like but a, on the it's inside. It's like a combination of Vegas and Salt Lake City. On the City. inside, it's Scottsdale. Right. <laughs> Speaking of Vegas, I'm going to Vegas to drive the Formula One track. Oh, right. On Friday. 1 a.m. is my drive time in the DBX 707. You're driving the Formula One track in a sport utility vehicle. That's that's what I got. That's what they're <laughs> giving me. And I got to drive it home, too, afterwards. So it'll be fun. Be a good long trip. Long day. Couldn't pay, couldn't pay me to do that. Um, uh, you could, yeah, you're going to go to sleep after that, right? Yeah, I'm not okay. going to drive straight home afterwards. Although yeah. I did think about it. I'm like, I'm going to be nope. wired after this fucking thing. I might for, look in the you'll car. You'll be wired for 20 home. minutes. I know. And then, yeah. I yeah, drove I the Monaco Formula One track, so I'm good. Yeah. I did that once too, but I did it slow. I did it in traffic. Yeah, I did it slow. I get to drive, I get a session on the Formula One track. In a DBX, though. It's yeah, a, it was fa- a fast one. It's okay. They you should good. see if you should. You should see if you could. It's no Chuck Wallen in A class. We hear what it's you're not, saying. Yeah. We feel you, Doug. Do you want to take the A class out and just see? Be like, hey, look. Look, he was right. It is. I've a got box. this here. Can I just? Want is it at the bunker? Yeah. I'll come to the bunker and, and take, it, <laughs> take it for a it. go. I'll take it for a go. Yeah. Okay, I'm selling it in like three weeks though. So <laughs> all right, it I'll might try be to... uh, right around Black Friday. If my oh. A class is live, <laughs> <laughs> please buy it. Ignore everything I've said. <laughs> Listen to this podcast and buy your A class. Uh, all right, we're gonna go. Thanks, Doug. Goodbye, See you later, everyone. everybody.